It's Offside with Haas and McGuire. Hey, welcome to Offside with Haas and McGuire. I'm Haas. I'm McGuire. All right. How's she going? <laughs> it, it, we, haven't, we have not done this, been together, even seen each other in a month. Almost. Yeah. Got to be, eh? It's close to a month. Yeah. So you, cause, because, here's what happened. The last time we shot an episode, uh, you were heading off to Newfoundland. Right. I was heading to Arizona. Right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and then. Oh yeah. All hell broke loose. You strung together an episode. Uh, Yeah, I did put together an episode, but we weren't together. Yeah. Right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. So then uh, now we're you know you you were in uh, you were in Newfoundland, which I want to hear about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you came back from Newfoundland, and I ended up being um, let. How do you say this? Uh, Taking a tour of the healthcare system. Okay. Again. And fuck, unbelievable. Yeah. And so then, uh, and then you went to uh, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and now you're back. So we're we're finally back together. I am not a hundred percent. So if I if I don't look like my incredibly handsome self, it's just because there was a lot of blood loss. Just right? call it a day that ends in Y. Fuck. No, man. Yeah. You seriously, it's, you've you, you're, you've shrunk away to nothing. There's nothing left really? of you. Yeah. Well, you know what? Honest to God, I lost uh, almost three liters of blood. Like, like your, your body only has like five. Wow. And I. That's was, even more than I lost from that brawl in Bell's Corners. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine had nothing to do with a punch in the nose, right? You know, you bleed a lot from the nose, eh? You sure do. I can, I can tell you that. Uh, so so, anyways, but. But we're back, and we got the, we got this episode, and we'll, we were not going to talk about uh, the health thing. But I, I, I have not even heard about Newfoundland, so I, uh, I'm sorry to open up. I know that wasn't the plan, but we're opening no, up. No, but you need to tell, you need to share. I'm glad you did. Glad you shared with people. People have asked me because I wrote on Facebook, okay, the other day that we were going to get finally back together. Yeah. I wrote in a bit of a diatribe after I rehashed Philadelphia, and I said, and coming up this week, Chris and I... Yeah, getting together. Offside with Haas and McGuire, and I gave our fabulous sponsors a plug and shooting the shot and everything. Yeah. And I said, look, you had some health issues, and you did, man. Like three wow. liters of blood, you kidding me? Yeah, it was pretty Chris, crazy. I mean, Jesus. Well, and all joking the, aside. I'm all joking, all joking right? aside is one of the things that you, know, you don't realize. You know, I had that stroke, and then they had me on a couple of different blood thinners, mm-hmm. and then I had this bleed, which then turned into crate because of the blood thinners. Right. So, um, it, it, but I, you know what? Very lucky. Um, and uh, initially, when I got to the hospital, uh, you know, and I was very stoic. I'm, I'm a tough guy, and I'm not going to lie. I, I, you know, I get there, and Evan drops me off. I said, I'll be fine. Don't worry. And I walk in there. My blood pressure was 84 over 40. Oh. And the guy goes, hang on a second. And he Lord goes and gets, mom's. and he goes, he goes and gets another like uh, yeah. blood pressure thing to check. And see it's gotta be wrong. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he goes, all right. Okay. And the next thing I know, and then, and then honestly, uh, I don't know how much longer it was, but I was in there, but then I lost consciousness. I, I you know what I mean? So anyways, I, I'm back. I'm here. I got to stay in a fabulous fucking tent. At the Ottawa Civic Hospital, there's you know that tent in the parking lot that you'd think they put like maybe they have some like maintenance like, equipment uh, and stuff in there yeah. or something. No, no, that's for patients. That's well, how bad our fucking healthcare system is. That 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 is it's just. I got to tell you, Liam. We had a pandemic, and they spent billions of dollars on a lot of things. Never built one fucking hospital, for a pandemic. You know, that that, that it's that's a. Re- the, the people of Canada and the yeah. people of Ontario in particular now, because that's where we are, yeah. but should be fucking like marching, okay? And saying like, what the well, they, fuck? They are, but for everything else. Well, that's true. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's more concern. There's more money spent on cutting off a fucking 10-year-old's cock than there is about, you know, me. No, it's true. It's fucking true. Do you know, I just fucking found this out while I was in the hospital. There's a, uh, at, and there's two different schools, one out in Osgood, apparently, where uh, uh, kids who identify as animals, they identify as a cat. There's a fucking litter box out there. They have a litter box for this kid who identifies as a cat, apparently. Okay, now I don't know if there's truth to that story or not. I don't believe it, personally. 
Although I have heard stories that there are people that that is one of the things, but you're telling me this is an Osgood? That's what I heard. I don't believe uh, it. Well, you know what? I, I, anyways, and there's also a Hol Holy Trinity in Stittsville or something well, like that. I've heard of Holy Trinity. You know, I don't know where it is. You know, I'm but, not, look, there could be a school. Very, look, Ottawa's a, I, I know we're not Toronto or Montreal, but we're over yeah. a million people all in. I've included yeah, the I mean, girls listen, in the valley. You know what? Here's Maybe it's a school somebody. You're, you're going to, if your kid, if you're a parent yeah, out there, I'm going to say this right it's now. All, it's all fine. If you're a parent and your kid thinks he's a cat, there's something fucking wrong with him. Like, don't indulge it. Listen. I would like to be 6'3", but I got to live with who I am. Tell your kid they're not a fucking cat. Like, Offside, but how's it going? Oh, there? I'm sorry. I, you know what? <laughs> I've, been, I've been pent up in a hospital for so long. Okay, let's talk about hockey. Let's talk about you going to Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of 10-inch kippers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Oh, so, man. so tell me about Newfoundland. Hey, you know what? Uh, you've done more traveling than most people I know, and I've I've done I've been fortunate to do a little bit. And in the last uh, three four months, including our fabulous trip to Florida, I'll put yeah. that in there. I know Florida is a destination for a lot of people, but I don't know if they've necessarily traveled it the way you and I did. But so uh, what in in the fast lane? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're a left lane parker. But but. Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll save that story for another yeah. time, maybe. I got to go out to Newfoundland, part two of my tour with the NHL Legend Company. Okay. Now, did, was this your first time in Newfoundland? I'd been to St. John's twice. Okay. And those were in and out trips. Right. You know, two days and a night, or two nights, three days at the most. Okay. Uh, and they came in 1999 and 2001. So okay. almost back to back years, right. and over 20 years ago. Right. So and I went nowhere. We were in St. John's. I did the George Street with Gretzky's youngest brother. Glenn, because we were part of the tour in 99, and I was there in 2001 on, on, on a book tour. Right. You know, for my second book. Yeah. So I was in and out of the city, man. That was it. This, we landed in St. John's. Uh, we did our first gig in Torbay, I believe it was, which is like a suburb, I guess, yeah. where, mostly. I ended up in Mount Pearl the next day, another suburb to hang with Terry Ryan's dad for a few hours. And then we had a fabulous event um, in Torbay that night. Actually, it was the only game the alumni guys uh, didn't win. They tied four all. It was a hell of a game. And, and, um, and then we got in a plane again and we flew to St. Pierre and Miquelon. Yeah. You know, France. You went right? to France. You went you to had France. Your, you had your passport. I, I needed my passport. Yeah. Needed my passport. We did an hour flight, 50 minute flight over to this island. Yeah. And of all the gigs, I mean, they were so well organized. They were so appreciative. The entire town, it seemingly came out. There's 2,200 people in St. Pierre yeah. and 700 in Miquelon. There's 2,900 people on the island. Right. That's it. Okay. And, and uh, they've got two rinks. They've got two hockey teams. And these, when I say they've got two teams, they've got two teams that could step into R.A. Black. Really? Yeah. Like, these are guys... Well, there's or, probably fuck all else to do. Well, these are guys that have come back that went out and tried to make the highest level they could. A couple of guys with some pro experience. Four or five guys, major junior experience. Right. A lot of guys with experience playing that, that in Europe. That came, originally came from their came, French? Came from there. French, French. Yeah, yeah. Really? Came from there. These guys are all their winged on hockey. I'll tell you something else. Uh, so much. It was so amazing. That was our second night. And, and we come in. We, uh, the guys do warm-up. And uh, they play the first period. We're going in. The Zamboni's on. They're signing autographs. Kids would come in after every intermission. And uh, anyway, long story short, game finishes. They bring the big thing of beer, which I always made sure I was down there for. Yeah. Great big tub of Molson X. The Molson X in St. Pierre and Michelin. I said, what the hell? Oh, yeah, well, we, we, we have some hardcore X drinkers here and, and Molson X drinkers here. And I said, you're kidding. Point them out to me. And uh, so they, they, bring, <laughs> they bring X in from the province of Quebec. And, and they had X there, and I was in my glory all night with X there. I would have drank anything anyway. It doesn't matter. But that was night two. Then we next day, we get on a ferry. We go uh, back over. Eight-foot waves and things like this. We're up on the bridge. Incredible experience. And we land. We go to the town of Fortune. We go to Fortune, Newfoundland. And, I mean, these little towns in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah. And, and again, another big hockey event. Another just, we're, we're just treated so well by everybody. You know what the people are like there. Yeah. And, and they're just so appreciative of these guys coming in. I was with eight NHLers. Chris Nyland was coaching. The other seven were playing. Dale Weiss and Bernie Nichols played on the same line. They just owned the ice. They owned it. And, and they just had fun out there, but they really could turn it up a notch if they wanted. And you know the names. And yeah. It was just fabulous stuff. 
and then we went, then we had to go up to northern Newfoundland, take another ferry over to Fogo Island. Okay. And we went over to Fogo Island and we spent two days there. Two days in Fogo Island, again, another hockey game. Again, just incredible experiences, uh, being shown the sights and, 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 and everything. Like it's, it's, we didn't see an iceberg, but they say it's quite common. Yeah. You know, to wake up in the morning, there could be an iceberg in the bay. We're driving back to one of the, one of the places they wanted to show us. There's a great big herd of caribou, like literally from here to your couch off the road. And you see, like, you're just startled, right? Really? Uh, it's just, oh, they're there all the time. And, and, you know, the ocean is everywhere. Like it's in this next stop, like West coast of Ireland. That's what it is. But, and this is the thing. So I, I, this is a little anecdote. Uh, so, uh, my, uh, my mother-in-law, okay. She t- tells us start. She's in Ireland. Okay. With a friend of hers from Newfoundland. Right. So they're in, you know, and I don't know where they were, but they're, they're there. Well, they said, well, I can't make out exactly where you're from, where in Ireland you're from. They thought that she was a Newfie, right? But yeah. they didn't know she was a Newfie. They thought she was from Ireland. Yeah. They had no idea she was a tourist. They said, like, I just, you've got to be from, you're from Donegal. Like, you're from Donegal. You no, know, I'm not from Donegal. You know, well, where are you from? And, well, you know, I, and, and she's trying to say, well, you are not from Canada. There's no chance in the world you're from Canada. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> It's pretty good. But uh, pretty good. Yeah, Newfoundland is very, very much like Ireland. Like it, the topography, if you're talking northern, right? Like in the north part of Ireland, you know. Oh, it, even large pockets of the south. Uh, the, yeah. the, 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 no, no, but I yeah. mean, uh, sorry, rephrase that. Um, there's not, you know, in the center of Ireland, it's the, the, the hills, just the, 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 the farmland and yep. stuff like that. Yep. You don't get that in Newfoundland. It's pretty much the rugged... You know, it, it is rugged. It, it is rugged. It, it, you know it what I mean? Rugged, yeah. That wild Atlantic Farming way. Farming is not on the... Uh, it's not uh, on the agenda. No. 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 Unless, no. of course, you're farming for... Uh, Rocks. Uh, mollusks. <laughs> yeah, maybe that. Maybe that. You know, the, the other thing was talking to so many of the, um, the local people who are almost all... Most are involved in the fishing right. you know, trade and the fishing industry. And this was the same in Fortune as well. Um, I met, I met uh, a couple of guys. In fact, the guy who drove me home... The light, the nights were late, and uh, really, yeah. Somehow they just always ended up. What's well, the time change? Right. Yeah, that's what it was. Because you're zipping across, <laughs> and you're always losing or gaining an hour, yeah. an hour and a half. So I never really knew what to do other than order another drink. Yeah. Fortunately, I had just, good company in the bar. I mean, yeah. uh, Dale Weiss, Darian Hatcher, Lucien Debois, um, the, our military guy Jimmy Colley, and a few, uh, one maybe other, and myself were uh, uh, Brian Scrugland, definitely. Yeah. Um, I may be forgetting one or two that hung most of the nights, but um, that group in particular were um, we were good to go. And uh, anyways, I was getting a ride back to uh, to the hotel, and I was talking to the one guy, and he said, "Would you like to see the my boat?" And I said, "Yes, I would." And he took me to the to the little marina there, and it's, it, these these things are. And did you have sex? <laughs> no. <laughs> Because that's what, that's, how, that's, that's that's so. how they that's how they get you. They say, "Come oh, on and see my boat." Come see my boat. Next thing you know, you're yeah. j- you're jigging for cod. You know, old Jed's a millionaire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, just actually, the name of the restaurant was the uh, was the the cod uh, diggler or jiggler or something, but uh, there was a little bar in behind it. But that was in Fogo Island. This was in Fortune. The guy told me. I said, "So tell me, like, how far out would you typically go?" He said, "Well, 120, 130 miles." Mm. Hey, are you? Freaking kidding me? Like, can you even imagine being out that far <coughs> in the ocean? Like, I mean, you go out even, you go out even two or three miles, you don't see any land. Yeah. I can't even imagine 120 or 30 miles. I said, look, I, I probably shouldn't bring this up, but I said, just tell me to absolutely like fuck right off, you know? But I said, what about the movie, The Perfect Storm, you know? And, and he said, look at, we have top of the line radar. Every yeah. one of these boats, we're on our computers, our laptops, and our phones before we even set foot in this thing to leave. We've all got families. That guy, that day, he, he stayed out and stayed in the teeth of it. He knew what was coming. They wanted to, to, to try and ride it out, get yeah. around it, whatever. We never, like he said, we. I said, but you've lost guys. He said, of course. Yeah. Sometimes you're in the water, things can go wrong. Oh, things can go wrong. Yeah. So yes, they've lost people. There's been memorials, there's testaments and things of that nature. But I, I was blown away by that. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I'm a land lover. There's no question. I can't even swim. 
So, you know, me in the water, unless it's frozen in my drink or I'm skating on it, never really been a big fan of it. See, and I, I, and I you know, I like, fi- but I, I love, I, I love I know the you ocean. Do. I, I know you do. I know all, it's in my blood. I know you do. You know? And, and, and we're, you know, I, I just could not be less like that, but I applaud you <laughs> so, for being well, like that. you know that. what? You keep eating your fucking potatoes there. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> I do quite well at it. I, I think yeah. uh, everywhere, everywhere I went, there was a little bit of uh, shock and awe, but, um, <laughs> It, it, I just can't speak enough about the trip. I write about it. If you follow me on social media, it's up on my platforms, both New Brunswick and Newfoundland. And I just put one, put one up for Philadelphia. Again, it's, that was my fourth time In back Philly, there yeah. with the alumni, thanks to Brad Marsh. And again, uh, this one a little bit more near and dear to my heart. It's very violent. It's all about hockey fights. It's called, the, the event is called Friday Night Fights. Right. So it's pretty hard to misconstrue what it's about. Well, I used to, that's what I used to call when my dad would come home from the Legion. <laughs> Yeah. You know. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Oh, well, you know what? That sounds like it's fantastic. So, stuff. so okay, so Very lucky. so Newfoundland was a wonderful experience. Mm. Then you went to Philly. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. you had that Friday night fight experience. Yeah. Okay. And I ran the Rocky Steps again and uh and and we went to an Irish pub downtown. These uh I've I've met some people in Philly yeah. and and uh one is uh this this woman named Jen. I met her in 2019. So did the guys who came with me and you know them all. Uh Rocket came. Yeah. And Kevin came Jardine came. Oh, the last no, this in 2019 they right. came and, and they did the Philly tour with me. And so they met Jen and some of her friends as well. And in this case here, Jen and her, her girlfriend, uh, Noel, Noella, who is right from Dublin. Okay. Right from Dublin. So uh, it was just awesome meeting them. We, they, they, uh, we, we had some fun. I, it's all on my, my social media. Well, is, is Noella going to be in Dublin? Uh, well, can we get her to go to Dublin? You know when what? Gonna She's be going to be in Dublin from the September 5th to the 24th. Oh. So we're yeah. just we're missing, missing her. her. We're just missing her. Uh, and she said, well, maybe I'll try and extend or whatever. But I said, well, it's like, because as you know, I'm going a few days early. You are going. And, and, and as am I, though, by the way. Oh, are you? I, I'm going a few days early, but I, I've got work. I Okay. I got prep work to do. Yeah. You're going, uh, you know what I mean? Like I'm that's... going to see Cousins. Yeah. And Beaver's coming with me, Dougie. Hewitt. Yeah. So we're, and we're staying, my, one of my cousins and her husband have a place in Dublin. We're going to stay there. Yeah. So, uh, and then of course we'll meet the rest of you guys and our, our, our winner from our fabulous uh, Hosey and Brown hockey pool. So well, you know free, what? So. Perfect jumping off point. Okay, mm-hmm. so so let's talk about the Hosey and Brown uh, <clears throat> hockey pool, yep. which has it it got exciting. So I while I was in the hospital, I monitor I very very closely monitoring the hockey pool. Okay, and I'm looking, and so we get between okay at one point, first place and second place, a half a point difference. That was it. Bullshit. Yeah, half a point. And it's now, it's like 15 points now or something. Okay. But it was only a half a point difference, okay? Uh, your son, Rory, yeah. was in third. Yeah. He's since fallen to fourth. Okay. But, you know, right in the mix there. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Um, and so this, I mean, you know, for the guys, and I, and I spoke to the guys uh, who are um, in first and second and third place, right, as well, because I wanted to make sure. I said, listen, this is... You know, it's getting tight. Yeah. I want you to, you know what I mean? I want to know what, you know, you guys think about your plans. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, so we were chatting and I know them, right? So, um, so the one guy who's currently in lead. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Blades of Steagle. Yeah. Okay. Great name. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited about that. But then I was also talking to Good in the Room, they said. Yeah. Chuck. Yeah. Okay. And, and he's excited. Right, yeah. and he might even I have no he, idea how he's going to get around that wedding if he wins. Oh well, no, 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 the no, no. Here's the wedding is on Saturday, and then this we leave Sunday night. It's perfect. He's perfect. He just fucking wipes his hands and walks <laughs> his away. His wife will not drag him through the rigor. I have no idea. Wow, but. you know what? Here's the thing. They have been together for a long time. That's she true. is going to be 100 percent behind him being able to go there. I, right. That's what wives of that age do. They're like, are you thinking about leaving for a while? Go the fuck away. Perfect. Just leave me alone. Yeah, it's probably not right? a bad thing, right? Yeah. yeah. No, no, it absolutely. I, and I say that. I'm joking. Yeah. I, I know yeah. that. But, but, but the, you know what? I, if you're married for a long time, yeah. I can tell you this. Most wives are extremely supportive. Ah, so that's what it's like. <laughs> Well, listen, you don't stay married if it's not, if it's, yeah, well, if you're not supportive of each other, they, they, there's no point. Okay. So let's well, moving on from that. Let's talk about, um, uh, some of the things that we're going to talk about this week 
yeah. in um, uh, on the show. Okay, well, we're catching up. We're playing some catch-up. We are playing catch-up, and, and this may be a little long because we are also adding our uh, the very first official part right. of the Phil Esposito interview ah. when, when we actually said, welcome, and then we did that. The other stuff was just behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, just, okay? yeah. just, just chatting. Just chatting. Okay? So, uh, to that end, uh, the... Trade deadline? Trade deadline. That's yep. what I was looking at. Yeah. Yeah. So, what did you think? So, let's talk about a couple of things first. Vegas. Things... Okay, you got to talk about Vegas, but you, when you look at it that way, like, great fucking pickup with Hurdle. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Last trade, too. You know? Of the entire uh, deadline. Well, because they had to, you know, they had to build up that whole, you know, uh, long-term disability or long-term yeah. injury, yeah. whatever, like, uh, injured reserve. Uh, I, so here's the thing. Everyone's going on about Vegas, okay? I don't think they're faking it. Um, well, I don't think he's faking it either. However, I do think, uh, especially this is the third year in a row that he's done it. Last year, obviously, to tremendous success, he carried off the Stanley Cup. Very difficult to repeat, despite Tampa and Pittsburgh twice in the last, as we know, eight seasons. But still very rare to happen. I believe that um, this is extremely convenient. I believe that he is injured, but is it really something that necessarily should take it to the end of the regular season? I don't, I don't believe it. I personally don't believe it. I think him sitting out and them and allowing Vegas to use his, his contract allowed them to bring in those three players, including, as you say, yeah, hurdle. hurdle at the end. And uh, uh, they, it's just a tremendous augmentation. Now, oh, keep in mind, uh, Clegg is out right now, too, who was probably their most complete defenseman right. last year. Uh, but there's no, uh, there's no talk about him not being ready to go. No, no, and, and that was not part now, of it. Having said all that, they're only six points up on a playoff spot. Like, they That's have right. fallen down into a yeah. wild card spot. But they're six points up. That's... It takes ten games on the average on a, a, a you know on the average to pick up two maybe three points. Yeah, they'd have to. Ha- that's if the one team that's losing them has to really collapse. Now Vegas hasn't played well. They're under five hundred. Their last twenty games, twenty five games, what have you. But they're still Vegas and they still are winning uh, enough games to have them at seventy five points as we take this. Right. And to have them six points clear. And and don't forget those other teams. It's not like they're gonna. More than likely, I mean, the Islanders are doing it a little bit in the East right now, but inevitably every dog has their day after a big run, and you're going to lose a game or two, and that will only help Vegas as well. Right. I think Stone is absolutely going to milk the end of this to stay on long-term injury reserve and duplicate exactly what he did last year. However, I do not dispute the fact that he's, well, you say he's got lacerations and... and oh, the and, spleen. Um, yeah, I, and 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 I heard all the guys on the radio. I've listened all the I've listened all the online radio stuff, and and, and these are all physicians, right? These, yeah, everybody's a doctor, <laughs> and uh, they're playing one on the radio. And I know they're not, but what they're saying is that in today's game, the medical reports that have to go to the NHL that you're not falsifying this, and right. that it's impossible to falsify this and that. I don't believe it necessarily is. So I'm 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 kind of talking out of both sides here. I'm saying he's legit hurt. I do not believe he probably would necessarily, under more, most circumstances, be out until the start of the playoffs. I don't think he gives a shit about the points or anything else. He's got the big ticket. He's making he's millions. Got the cup His bonus already. means nothing. He's got a cup. He wants another. They all want when you win. You want to try, especially when you're still right of age. You want to try and get a second, third, what have you. And uh, and, and I think that's what's yeah. going on there. Has result him going out? Did they have a conversation? You know, with him and. Him and him and the boys there, uh, yeah, I, I think they probably did. And he said, oh, you know what, it's pretty easy. Look, I'm hurt. You know, just take put me on long-term injury reserve. Use the money. Go get who you got to get. I 1,000% I okay, believe so that then the, then the happened. question is this. Why have a fucking salary cap then? Like, I mean, if you're, if you're not going to... Because it is effective in the regular season. Here, here's the other thing that people forget. I, I listen to the guys on radio here today. They're, everyone's missing... The most important point when discussing all this, whether it's right or wrong, is up for you or you or anybody watching to decide. But the playoff rosters are expanded. Right. Right? And you're expanded by like five players, five, six players. Yeah. So, of course, you have to. You can't have a cap. But listen, Kessel was available. Yeah, Kessel's available. Yeah, he'll never play again in the NHL. But you know what? His legacy is set. Secure. doesn't matter. He's going to hang around, get a few more hot dogs, and see if someone will pick him up for a song. Maybe they will. He wants to go out. I mean, it was like Brian Trotche at the end. Some of these guys never want to retire. But uh, at the end of the day, 
Um, the playoff rosters are expanded and have been for years. Right. So, you know, and, and uh, obviously what Vegas did last year, what Tampa did in 2021, which today is the most egregious at 16 million over. Chicago in 2010 started it all. They were 5 million over. And this has become the norm. It's just, it's different degrees. And we don't really hear about it now unless it's 10, 12, 14 million. So it's and like now, a face-off. Yeah. If, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. Okay. Yeah, that's right. basically what it is. What are you going to do, Chris? The rosters are expanded. Right. Right? Which they should be. They, they want everybody to have the best representation well, that and, they can. And, in the sense that, even if you lose a key starter, like, do you think Philly would have liked to have, or um, Philadelphia would have loved to have Tim Kerr in 1987? I said that down there. I said, imagine... The guy scored 34 power play goals. That's the all-time record in one season. He's out of the lineup. At, they go to seven games against Edmonton. I'm telling you right now, if the Flyers got Tim Kerr in 87, if the Habs got Rocket Richard in 55, different years, different times, different eras. But you put those guys in the lineups, those series in the finals, went seven games, those teams win, in my opinion. So they've expanded the rosters to hopefully, so you get a rostered guy. Right. Who's in your organization. He's not some schmo you picked up hitchhiking coming from the International League. You got some guy who's probably had more than a cup of coffee in your organization and he right. can be ins ins inserted in. And many of them have. So, so you can't have a salary cap in the playoffs. Right. No, 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 no. I understand the playoffs. I get that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, so this leads me to something just for contemplation because we, we got to talk about so much stuff. But I, I want to, I in our next episode, I want to talk about the the top five or the five kids who are currently in the American Hockey League who are going to come out have their coming out party in the playoffs for some team right you know how, how that where I, there's generally a few guys because there's always injuries in the playoffs right like that's one of the reasons the rosters expanded is because there's injuries guys but there are some guys who are really doing well in the American Hockey League that will be making their jump up Right. Yeah, there, there will be a, there will be a few, there will be a few for sure. So I, 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 I don't I, know if anybody will necessarily. I don't know. I can't think in recent memory, although I would need to give it some thought as to who would fit the bill of who you're, well, I, what I, you're so suggesting. What do you mean, like in, in well, past? Who's, who, well, who's come up that's really made a splash? Oh well, like w didn't uh, wasn't Caulfield a, for a call up the the first year? Well, uh, wasn't I mean? Well, I, that's what I'm referring to like when no, they come yes, up. They yes, yes, and no. I mean, he was he was sent down. He was brought back up. They just didn't even dress him those first two games against Toronto. They just didn't even dress him. And, and then they put him in the lineup. Right, but he, but, was, but he had previously been an American Hockey League yeah, yeah, player. Yeah. That's, what I'm, that's what I'm referring to. Okay. Those are the kind of guys. Like, because, I, listen, I know you have a coffee. But you he, go down, he, he had been on the NHL roster. For so. a bit. Yeah, yeah. For but, a bit. But yeah. he, was, he was permanently in uh, uh, yeah, he'd Laval. Been, he'd for, been sent, he'd you know been sent I mean? down. Yeah. He'd been sent down. Okay. So that's, that's kind of what I'm referring to. Uh, okay. you know, and, that, and it's something yeah. to consider. And, and anybody, I, listen, if you, if you want to write in and like say shit or whatever about that, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are related to it. Yeah. I would, anyway. Yeah, well, there's, okay. maybe there's another player. I, 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 you know, I, I just know, don't know in recent memory who, who that would necessarily be. I mean, Caulfield is a bit of an example. You no, know, but, but that, that's just but, one, and I, and I use yeah. Montreal. But there, there are yeah. many that have happened in, in the past where a guy comes out of the American Hockey League and just happens to be full of piss and vinegar and makes an impact yeah, in the playoffs. I suppose. I, you know? I, I don't think there's been many, to be honest. I think it's pretty rare. I, I, can't, I can't think of any others off the top yeah. of my well, head. Well, that's because I just so, brought it up out of the blue. Like, we'll, yeah. have to, we'll have to, and that's why it just occurred to me right yeah. now. This yeah. is what I do. I, like that, man. <laughs> Shit just fucking comes. Okay. Okay. Change the subject from that. Yeah. We're still talking about trade deadline. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tarasenko. Yeah. Is gone. Yeah. Which was, uh, I mean, Getting just, rid of that money was the best thing that Ottawa could do. But well, they kept some of it. But. Yeah, they retained some. Um, you know, it's just like Montreal did with Jake Allen. I mean, you know, there was a lot of retention deals, actually. Yeah. There was quite a few that were done where, where parts of uh, salaries were retained. So, uh, I mean, look, Tarasenko wasn't going to resign. Uh, he had well, he wasn't going to resign? No, he wasn't coming back to Ottawa. He absolutely... Well, he had one more year, though. Uh, no. Oh, I thought no, no. I thought he has one more year after this. No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, I could I, be wrong. I, I thought uh, he had still another year. No, he needed to be uh, re-upped, and he wasn't okay. gonna he wasn't gonna do it. And and um, at least that's the the theory. And, and oh, I, well, then no, though for yeah. sure. I thought he had another year, but either way, no, I don't think he, he was worth the money. 
uh, no. for, for, for Ottawa well, at all. Well, you know what? He was damn close. I mean, he, uh, he, he, uh, he, you know, the rule of thumb, 10 points is a million bucks. So, you know, he, he was... He was heading to probably a close to a 50 point season. He's a $5 million player. 50 points, points is 5 is million bucks. Like, that, that's the rule of thumb. You know, yeah, you get 100 I, points, you're worth 10 million, you know? Now, is yeah. that work in men's league as well? Yep, yep. Exact same thing. <laughs> Just different numbers. Yeah. Every you're, point, every you're, point you're, means you're paid, you buy a round. Yeah, exactly. You're <laughs> paid by chicken wings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what, another, another big. But there, there was thing. such consternation over that, Chris. Why? Sens fans freaking out, and some still are. Some are still throwing Steos under the bus, yet he had no other choice yeah, I, but to trade him to Florida. He was only waving his no move to go to Florida. Well, it course. was the only team you could deal him with. So, you had to take whatever garbage they were given back, which is a third round or a conditional fourth. Yeah. And so they had to take it. Yeah. They made the mistake in the summer. That's right. Is when the mistake That's was right. made. The first mistake. With Tarasenko. Before, so. before Steos got there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is a Pierre Dorian move. And unfortunately, it, it, it just like Montreal is dealing with Mark Bergeron's contracts with some of the Josh Anderson, Armia, Brendan Gallagher, and some of these guys. They absolutely do not belong in the NHL. It's unfortunate they've had different times where they've been good in their career. They no longer are. They right. can't contribute. They're well. They're massively overpaid, and they're in the lineup with no trades and no moves. And good luck in the next couple of years while Montreal continues to try an inch ahead. And their their but, hands are tied. But that's here. why they have the bottom. Ottawa's hand was was tied there. Yeah. So yeah, they no. made no other moves, and the Sens fans were. So, I think right now they're just they're totally beat up it, after that last road trip. Oh, no. that was sad. Uh, but you know, so I want to talk about this because. Um, I, for one, because we, we were talking about this in the dressing room, like before, not you and I, but guys, and everybody was going on about like, you know, chicken, they're going to, why the fuck would you trade a stud on defense? Your best defenseman. Cause he hasn't played like a stud. I mean, your uh, best defenseman is, is Sanderson. Sanderson. Well, he, no, Sanderson's defense. got a lot of promise, but well, I, I like chicken better. Okay. I, you know, I mean, I, chicken's tougher. Sanderson. Really? You don't. Wow. He, listen, he really is tougher. He just, well, he's tougher than Sanderson, but I don't think that's saying much. I think I think uh, Chikrin, uh, and I say this uh, with all due respect to his dad, who's a personal friend, uh, Jeff. I've known Jeff for a long time. I wish his son had a little chip off the old man's block. You know oh. what I'm saying? But we see that all the time. Look at uh, look at DeBrusque in Boston. He sure as hell ain't his dad, but he's got way better hands than his dad. I know he's regressed a little bit, but the guy's still effective, and he's going to be hell in a cell come playoff time, settling nicely there. The Bruins going to probably try and make up yeah. for that uh, embarrassment last year in the first round. And they'll be a real oh, they tough will. Oh, no, the Bruins. Yeah. I, listen, so here's, we can do picks right now because the trades, the trade deadline. Well, we should probably what? wait until we wait? see matchups. Okay. Let's see matchups and then we'll have a playoff show. All right, we'll have, we'll do that. We'll do, we'll do something because like that. Because matchups are still on. But I don't care what I'm saying. I'm saying Boston goes. Boston's going to the, to the conference final. Boston's going to the conference okay, final. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pick Florida out of the East. I'm taking Florida out of the East to... Uh, uh, that, that's no, but that's not... That, okay, so you're saying that it'll be Boston and Florida oh, in the, con in the conference. Uh, yeah. No, I think, unfortunately, they would meet second round, so they can't, okay. go, they can't play each other. So. All right, but you're, you're picking yeah. Florida then. I'm picking Florida to okay. win the yeah. East, to, to represent right. the East again. Yes, I'm picking the Panthers, so we'll see what happens. Uh, like I said, let's see matchups and injuries. Yeah. I mean, if they lose half their roster to injury in the next four, four weeks, then I won't pick them. But, right. you know, you're asking me here uh, in March, and let's be honest, it's uh, before St. Patrick's Listen, Day. You're going to yeah. get a different answer after St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to need a week, maybe two, to recover. So, uh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so we're going to wrap up on some, some other things that have happened in the last little while. A little uh, kerfuffle over there in New York. Rempe? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's the hottest story in hockey. Or he was until Tortorella's explosion. But the hottest story in hockey after... Terry Ryan's game with the Growlers, and um, I would say, with maybe a little bit of a nod to uh, Alexander Daig's documentary, which garnered a lot of, lot of, uh, a lot of chatter, and I did eventually see it. And then I worked with him in Brockville, mm -hmm. so we had a chance to talk with him. But the biggest story has been Matt Rempe, man, in New yeah. York, the six foot eight giant coming in, <laughs> playing six games, four fights, scores a goal, picks up an assist, has another goal disallowed, and. Uh, He's just, he's a talk of hockey. And it really came to a head a week ago Saturday in Toronto, hockey night in Canada. 
when he went toe-to-toe with Ryan Reeves at center ice after turning Reeves down earlier in the game, had to go home after he ran Labushkin and Reeves said, we got to go now, kid, and they went. And it was a talk of hockey leading up to it. Are they going to go? And they did, and, uh, and it's, it's just beautiful. Watching the hand wringing on social media from the left-wing tree huggers has just been worth the price of admission. And, and watch this kid come in and trying to make a name for himself, trying to find a hole for himself. By the way, he's got, he's got not bad hands. Like, the guy can shoot a puck. He can handle a puck a little bit. He got ripped off the other night. That goal, I don't know how that goal is disallowed. It was up on edge. It was fucking in. It was ridiculous. It got called back. Anyway, I love it. I love the story. I love him. I, I don't know what's going to happen when he goes to Montreal, if he's going to go Wi-Fi or not. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Because Wi-Fi was, that, was, in, was him a year ago, right? Right. So, yeah. so this is, it, it's all, all it is, Chris, and I'll throw it over to you. All it is is that, to me, the pendulum for the last couple of years has been swinging back a little bit to normalcy, to what we all enjoy in the game to a little bit more of mano a mano, which, which, which drove hockey and has for 100 plus years. And it's being done in the right way as far as I'm concerned. And, and there's no bullshit, although as I told you, after the Gallagher incident and, uh, on Pellich, there's been, uh, what, seven, eight suspensions since then? Yeah. There's one every single week. There's fines and suspensions in the NHL still. But it's a breath of fresh air to see a lot of what still is important to a lot of fans in the game, two guys dropping the gloves and settling it right there. I, well, love, it. I love the story. I think, I think it's important to, to, to use that. They're settling something or they're, you know, they're protecting somebody or they're, they're making a statement. Yeah. Okay. There's no uh, fighting for the sake of fighting is not worth it. It's just, you know what I mean? Because you can do that. You can arrange that. They're called uh, boxing matches. Right, called right? state and hockey, it's called stage fights. Right. And, yeah, yeah, and, exactly. Uh, but yeah. but when you see it in a game where there's a reason, you say, you know what, that guy, he he deserves that, right? Yeah. He's, you know, every once in a while, someone deserves a punch in the head. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. And and you know what, I've I've been the guy to get it. Yeah. And I've been the guy to give it. Hundred percent. Right? Yeah. And and you have to have that. And you know what, you you know Hank Williams Jr. calls it an attitude adjustment. Right. 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 Because that's what it is. Yeah. All right. So one last item. I don't care if it's staged or not. If it happens, it happens. And yeah, yeah, but there's no passion if it's staged. Well, it's, pa- it's passion from the fan base, and, and that's my point. That's what we've seen. You're not on social media like I am, and, and I know that's only representative of a, of, a, of a smaller percentage of fans. Right. The wider, it's always the vocal minority, you know, who control True. most things across all walks of life. The vocal minority now because of the phones and the ability to go on social media. So I'm really only referencing them. You could maybe sit down here with, let's just say, the group that attended your Christmas party, okay? Yeah, yeah. Let's say that group came in, and if you included the women in the conversation, they would probably be a lot of naysayers to uh, Rempe and, and Ryan Reeves. But right. if you said, okay, show of hands, who's all a hockey fan? Let's ask you first. Right. And let's say whoever, regardless they were, and I'm just using your Christmas party because yeah. I think you had a good cross-section of people. Yeah, right? You know, uh, you know, all, all good friends of yours and uh, or professional, personal, whatever. I was here too. It was a great night. And let's say you asked for hockey fans. Okay, show of hands. Let's say argumentatively you got 20. Argumentatively, there was probably about 80. Like hockey, hockey fan. Like hockey Would have been 80? Okay. Oh, there was, like, there was probably... Yeah, yeah, actually you did. Yeah, you know, tons I mean, of guys was, you played with. So. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that played. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, so 80. So, yeah. and, and you said, and, and let, well, you would know your, you, who you had here. So let's just so, use, let's use your example. So if I said to you, your crew that was here, your, your, your people who were here at your party, if you asked them who had a problem with Reeves and Rempe Saturday night. I don't think there'd be, honestly, I, I don't... Pretty small number, right? S- small number would have a problem with it. Even the yeah. wives. Like the wives, I, I, I'll be honest with you, most of my friends' wives I know are, I mean, they, they don't want their husbands fighting anymore. No. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> they don't want that. <laughs> But they're, they're yeah, totally, but we're in our fifties and sixties. Right. Yeah, yeah Rempe's okay. twenty-one years old. Well, no, but this is the thing. So they understand that it's part of the game. They've raised our kids, yeah. who played high competitive level hockey, and yeah. so they they learn to accept that it's part of the game. Yeah, partly because we've argued that it's part of the game for so many yeah, years. Yeah, <laughs> But but yeah, yeah but that, that's it. I know I agree with you. I know you're absolutely right. I you know what? I have no issue with it at all. You know what yeah. I mean? But but it was quite the big kerfuffle with well, people. Well, and the way it kind of got masked out is because Rempe turned Reeves down, and and it was like Reeves wanted to go home. I mean, the, the video was right there. If you didn't watch the game, yeah. you see Reeves skating up on the ice. He's telling the kid, "Let's go." 
and and you know they didn't go and and you know Rempe had been in, in a series of fights yeah. they were good fights but he was losing them and he's yeah. a kid he's 21 he's yeah. big he's monstrous he's 6'8 but he's getting beat like he's fighting Delorier and Olivier and these guys are accomplished fighters and they're getting him at the end and they're winning and they're hometown fans I just did that gig in Philadelphia Brad Marsh on the microphone in front of everybody hundreds in, in, of in attendance and he says I sure wish the NHL brass had a bit in attendance here two Saturdays ago when the Rangers came in and Nick Delorier and Rempe fought. He said the buzz in this building was something that I have not felt in years. Really? In years. And Brad said this on the microphone. Now, he's preaching to yeah, a group of people that were pretty That's much right. in full agreement. Let's be honest. Yeah. They're there to watch hockey fights on a 14-foot screen and the guys are all here in attendance. Talk about it. Yeah. So probably not you know, a crowd where you're going to get a lot of naysayers. However... It was important enough for Marshy to make that, to, to, to almost re-energize it, reinvigorate it, you know, and, and, and make the statement so definitively. The buzz in the building, which is exactly what it was in Toronto. So, I love it because for all the naysayers and all the pussies out there and all the people crying about any time someone throws a shot at hockey, let alone all the egregious shit that goes on in so many other sports, like baseball's throwing balls at guys' heads and stuff like that. You know, you, 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 you cry about hockey because there's a fight, because you never played, you know nothing about it. You just want to rail against a fight in hockey. And well, I love the fact that to, it's coming back. Listen, and to be fair. In a big way. Uh, to be fair, we've had, I, I listen, uh, there's a whole generation of people that, but I, I, I certainly, I call it the pussification of the, of the nation. Yeah. Okay? The whole nation, a bunch of fucking wusses. Wow, we are. We are. Well, sure. you know what? And, and, and I, you know what? I'm not saying I want to go out and fight somebody tomorrow, but I was at Canadian Tire. No, <laughs> 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 no but it is. It's the pussification yeah. of, of our nation. It's like my buddy Jimmy Fling when he told us one time, he said, yeah, geez, guys, I was in another fight at Walmart. Um, what's another doing in that statement? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That's probably not good, Jimmy. Exactly. Although that was years ago. With all due respect, because he watches the show. Jimmy, I know that was years ago. But yeah. no, you're right, man. It is. And that comes out on social media. Again, Volca Minority, and they're the ones. They, you know, they wave their, 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 their flags, whatever they want to support or whatever. And it's just they're so anti uh, any type of violence in hockey. And you think you can legislate it out or, or rule book it out and stuff. They just don't know what's inherent in the game, which is why I always make the point because there were so many people up in arms about Brendan Gallagher getting his five-game suspension, thinking it should have been more. Maybe it should have. Give him 10. Doesn't matter. I said, you think it's going to stop anything? There's going to be 15 more suspensions before the end of the season. And guess what? That's what we're on pace for. Yeah. So, you know, it, but, it's, it's a big boy game. Yeah. It's two entities, Chris. It's not yeah. you or me or the 20 million on social media. It's, it's the NHL players and it's the NHL owners, and they have a, an agreement that's collectively bargained. And yeah. that's what runs the NHL. So listen, we're going to change the subject to, uh, what's the last thing we wanted to talk about? Uh, trade deadline. Oh, Tortorella suspension. Tortorella. <laughs> speaking speaking, of, speaking of Philadelphia. <laughs> speaking of Philly. Yeah, Philly in the news. Well, you know, he, uh, he blew up in that game. Um, that was, they were playing... Uh, now, do you think he should... Like, initially... Yeah. The initial start, do you think he should have been thrown as early as he was? Because he lost it after he was thrown. Like, he, like he went bananas. He, I mean, he, he, yeah, he, he looked pretty normal after the second goal. Uh, by the third one, he, he, was in, he was already engaged with the referees. Yeah. He was engaged. Now, again, I have no idea what he said. Right. But it was, had to be significant enough. Like, if you're going to call them out, even though the fans can't hear and everything else... The four nothing goal, he lost it. I think he skated around him and said, "I heard your wife's a dyke." Yeah, <laughs> and ran. <laughs> your wife's a dyke. I know. I know. <laughs> one of the greatest, uh, one of the thousand greatest lines in the greatest sports yeah. movie ever. But uh, I, you know, listen, he's not the first coach to be kicked out or suspended. There's been many in NHL history going back to the 1930s. Jack Adams. I mean, 42. Jack Adams. Got, I mean, it, it, there's been so many. Harry Neal, 10 games, 1982. He, he drilled a fan in Quebec City. Uh, Don Perry he told uh, Paul Mulvey, get out there, don't dance. He got 15 days. Uh, they extended it to eight games. Uh, there's been a bunch of other two-gamers, three-gamer, yeah. four-gamer. So, you know, Torts is in good company, I guess, if you want to uh, call it You know that, what? But... Here's the thing. 
I like, and, and I, I, apparently most of the guys who have played for Tortorella like them. And it was on, they were, it was, they were playing Tampa and they were honoring the 2014. Oh, that's right, man. Right. <laughs> and all the guys were upstairs and the camera pa- panned up there. They're all watching. They're just laughing their oh, ass off. Yeah. They were laughing their ass off. And everybody on social media was laughing, but obviously the NHL had to take it seriously. Yeah, yeah. The thing okay. is, Chris, he wouldn't leave the bench. No, I know, I know. He wouldn't but, leave. So, but, you, but here's the thing. The question how is... How about the flyer owner saying he's paying the fine? How about that? Well, you know, I what? love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely. And it's been so well received online. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people saying... Good on, I'm not even a Flyer fan. I hate the Flyers, but I love this. I love yeah. this, you know? And you know why? Do you know why? Because we live in a society where people fucking throw people under the bus yeah. all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And when somebody goes up and says, you know what? Okay, he may have been wrong. I don't know what the deal was. It may, I don't know. Like, we don't know. Like I said, yeah. it, it seemed odd that he got thrown at the time that he got thrown. And then, of course, he lost it, right? And he wasn't going to, you know, but, but you know what? At the, at the end of the day... Okay. I mean, it was four, I know somebody was, else was, who had that issue himself <laughs> at a, a game as a player, not saying, fuck, I don't deserve to be thrown out. Yeah. And, <laughs> I heard that story once. It may even be you somebody know, in some, this room. Yeah, it could be. You know, Anyhow, that's not me. You know, and, and the reality is, is that sometimes the refs are fucking idiots. No, you just, you took the words right out of my mouth. I think that's another reason why it's been uh, widespread um, that the, it's been more revered than, than not because there is no repercussions for these officials. There's no, there's yeah. no accountability for their countless obvious errors. Uh, video review can correct some of the technical stuff and maybe overturn a goal and things of that nature. But the referees who end up, and sadly, be, and I don't mean to just say Tim Peel because he got caught on microphone, right. but you have to think, that's a microcosm of what exists when you're talking about 50, 60 officials. There's probably a couple at different times are going to get a little bit emotional in a game against a coach who's absolutely railing them. Yeah. Like you're saying the time of the game. Listen, it's 4 nothing. They're collapsing. He's snapping. It could have been 90 seconds in, let alone where it, right. where it happened. So it, it, uh, it's just a fact he wouldn't leave. And yeah. that's why he's, uh, the fine is being administered and it's anything more. It would have, had he just yelled one more thing and walked off, he gets nothing. Right. He just gets the game, that's yeah. it. But now he gets two and uh, 50,000. And, and a standing ovation when he returns. He will get yeah. one. Yeah. Well, look at that city. I mean, you know? you're talking about, look, let's be honest. We just did fight night in Philly. It's my third fight night out of the four events I've done there. They're going to keep doing it because Marshy says... They don't care. I could probably do it in front of 10 people. These sponsors are still going to sponsor it. They love it so much. I mean, no, they get people out, obviously. But, yeah, yeah. But it's a city where they've got no problem selling tickets for this. Right. Like, let, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. This, this isn't... I, I don't know that you could... And they did it. But went back and forth with my, my friends on social media, Mark and, and, and Janice Kelly. Mark Kelly was part of our... I wasn't on the committee, but I was hired to MC it in Ottawa okay. here in 2008. And they... And... and Look Marsh ran was there. It. Brad Marsh ran it. Right. And, and it was Bob Probert was one of the guys who came up. Oh, really? And I did a hot stove with, with uh, Bob Probert up on stage and Terry O'Reilly. And, and it was, uh, and Jimmy Kite. It was, it was spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. Uh, can I just tell you the line of that entire night when somebody from the crowd, and we took questions from the crowd, I had a wireless microphone, and somebody uh, said, uh, uh, Bob Probert, how come, how come you never fought Jim Kite? And uh, he didn't, didn't even miss a beat, you know, because Jim Kite's deaf. Right. And, you know, he played with hearing aids and, and he had to look and this and that. And probably didn't even miss a beat, God rest his soul. And he said, I asked him to go eight or nine times, but he never heard me. <laughs> 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 well, that's a, yeah. The whole place just broke up laughing. I don't know if you could do that right now, Chris, in Ottawa. What if you could I, say I, that? I don't know if you could do a fight night in Ottawa. I don't know if you would, if you would get a, a, an attendance for a fight night in Ottawa in know, 2024. Why don't we have one? Well, well, why don't we get some I'll, sponsors? I'll tell you we'll who wants to offside with Haas and McGuire. I'll tell you who wants to get involved if we do one. Who, who was on stage in Philly? Who's that? Matthew Barnaby. Oh, yeah. Well, he's an Orleans guy. He's in right? Orleans. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, oh. let's, let's, okay. So we're announcing, I don't even know how we're going to fucking do it, but we are announcing right now that we are going to do a Friday night fight night. We have no idea where, okay? 
but we want you, all of, all of viewers out there, yeah. to, to, to send in, like, a, to say, hey, I'm in. Like, count me up for two tickets, whatever, okay? We're, wherever it is, we're going to have this fight night. We're going to have a big screen. We're going to show all the fights, yep. okay? Yep. Uh, and, uh, and Liam and I will be there. Liam will be there. I will be there. Uh, we're going to hopefully get... Well, ma- you and I will host it. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll host it. Yeah. And then, and then we can... Oz and McGuire will be the hosts. That's right. Okay. Now, it, we just need some sponsors for that shit, and we're all set. Okay. Well, listen. Now, we got a plan. All right. Okay. we got a plan moving forward. All right. So, you know what we're going to do right now? What are we going to do? Given that this is such a monumental, historic event... That yep. we're gonna start, we're gonna have the Friday night fight here in Ottawa. Yeah. Okay. Maybe Marshy will come. He would okay? come. Okay. He would come. So we'll have the Friday night fight thing in Ottawa. Okay. This is a historic event. I'd like to talk about this week in hockey history. Hello, Canada. Lafleur coming out rather gingerly. Back to Lafleur. The Bossy shoots. He scores. This week in hockey history. Okay, we're back with this week in hockey history. Liam, uh, this is uh, early March, or actually not quite early March, almost oh, mid March. Mid March. Almost mid March. Oh, God, okay, it's mere mid- days before St. Patrick's Day. That it is. That it is. We'll talk about that. Gear it up, folks. But Gear it so, up. so, so, so listen. Do you have any any insight into things that may have happened in this week in hockey history? I'll give you two for this show, and then did you say we're going to tape another show this yeah, week? Yeah, we're going to try and tape another show this week. If we tape back. another show this week, I can I can bring I'll bring you up to St. Patrick's. All right. Okay. So because yeah. you've got it. We're we're in a a big big month for yeah. for this week's right. Um, I I think. Uh, today is it okay to say today's date? Does yeah, yeah, matter? today, yeah, absolutely. So, like we're we're taping on March 11th. March 11th, yeah. And obviously tomorrow will be the 12th. So these two dates are just synonymous with two really really significant events in NHL history. On uh, March 11, 1996, the Montreal Forum closed, right. and and uh, it was a Monday night, and I was there, and it. If was... I only knew somebody who had like a seat from yeah. the. Uh... Yeah, there. I can send you a picture of mine. I, I know there's probably other viewers out there that have one as well. And I was at the greatest Montreal Canadian man cave in the history of the world. In uh, Are we still going there? Had, uh, well, we can go. They, they're ready for us to organize well, I thought, it. Well, I thought we up. had a date and everything. No, we don't have a date. Well, we don't but, have a date. Uh, they, uh, Piero uh, messaged me the other day. said, when are you guys coming? So, uh, okay. you know, but I haven't been in town. Yeah. And you've been oh, in the hospital. Yeah. And uh, I've been drinking. So, you know, haven't been able to... Uh, <laughs> It's a little it's a little by a date. We're but, trying uh, to coordinate things. <laughs> There's something that seems to be uh, like always there. Either I'm away, <laughs> you're away, or you're drinking. That's right. That's the thing that's always constant. Uh, I can't. There's I always. Know. Are you, you know, sure? It's like I'm change. Sure. It's I think always. We need to constant. do that math equation. I'm not sure that's equaling <laughs> out there. But uh, yeah, yeah. Listen, they want us to come down. We want to set it up so we can do. Uh, um, the idea is maybe get Cornway and Serge Savard to be transported out to it. I have one Montreal Forum seat. Um, my, my dear f- new friend has, uh, I believe he has nine in total, nine forum seats in total. In fact, he has one whole row. So it's, it's, uh, it's really, it's beyond impressive. You'll see it cause we're going to get there. But March 11, 1996, the Montreal forum closes the Monday night. They beat Dallas four, one Kovalenko gets the last goal. The only other thing significant about that, Chris, of course, it ties in, in the middle of the 75 year history of the greatest sports story over time in the history of the world. Howie Morenza's funeral, March 11, 1937. Howie Morenza's daughter marries Boom Boom Jeffreyon. Uh, their first date, March 11, 1951. Um, they, uh, Boom Boom Jeffreyon number is going to be retired uh, by the Montreal Canadiens. This is after the forum closes, March 11, 1996. They're going to retire the boomers number in 2004. They're looking at dates. NHL says, uh, tells all the owners, cancel everything. Probably season is going to get canceled. Season gets canceled. They come back, 05, 06. They go back to boomer, pick a date. He looks at the schedule. March 11, Saturday night, Montreal. They're playing the Rangers. I, 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 I coached them. I used to play for them. And, and uh, they said, okay, March 11, 2006. Boomer gets stricken with cancer. It's stomach cancer. It spreads like wildfire. He's not going to make the trip. He's not going to be able to attend. He passes away the morning of March 11, 19, uh, 2006. The Montreal Canadiens say to Marlene, Howie Marenz's daughter, what do you want to do? 
we want to go. You can get us there, we'll go. They arrange transportation, they fly the family up from Atlanta. They go to Montreal, they bring, just like he told his wife, Marlene, then his girlfriend, Howie's daughter, on their first date at the Montreal Forum. One day, my sweater will hang beside your dad's. And they brought down number uh, seven, Howie Morenzas, halfway, and they raised up Boomer's number five, and then the five, seven, both went up together into the rafters on the day that Boom Boom Jeffrey owned died in 2006. Complete. But you're saying it's the same day that Howie Morenz died? Same day that Howie Morenz's funeral, right. same day as their date, same day as the closing of the forum, and then in 2012, the Montreal Canadiens sign Boom Boom Jeffreyon's grandson, Blake Jeffreyon. They sign him in March of 2012. He scores his first goal as a member of the Montreal Canadiens, wearing sweater number 57 to honor his grandfather and his great-grandfather who were both tied into March 11th and he scored his first goal against the Vancouver Canucks on March 11th. March 10th. Oh, March 10th. Oh. March 10th. He missed it by one day. Oh, no, but so you know what? The time zone. There was three I'll hours go with difference. That. I'll go with that. It's 75 years almost to the day yeah. from Lorenz's funeral to Blake Jeffreyon's goal with all of that history in between. It's the greatest singular sports continuation story ever in the history of mankind. You can't top that. You cannot top well, that. Well, I, I can't. But Nobody you know, can. Nobody sure? can. Nobody can top that. There's nothing there's, you know that what, continues. There's, there's in, probably a sumo there's nothing. wrestling family. Absolutely nothing. Japan. No, they all ate too much. There's nothing. <laughs> there's absolutely nothing that would have the synergy in and around and on the same date. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. And I'll finish on the next one, March 12th. Bobby Hull became the first guy to score more than 50 goals okay. in, in one season. In one season. On uh, March 12th, 1966, I believe it was a 545 mark of the third period. Scored on a slap shot, assisted by his line mate, Bill Hay, and Lou Angotti. They drew the assists on the play. The goalie was Eddie Jackman. It was a Ranger. It was a slap shot, massive ovation. Chicago went on to win a game. Pretty significant <clears throat> because Hull had joined... The aforementioned Boom Boom Jeffreyon and Rocket Richard as, as the, 50 the only goal uh, 50 goal scorers at that time, and 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 Hall had done it in 1962, and here he was um, recording another one in 1966. So only he surpassed 50. With the anniversary of that is tomorrow. It's a pretty significant date. There's so many, Chris. Those are, I mean, the forum one's a no-brainer. Kind of have to go with it because of the story. The other one, yeah. you know, Hull's. I, I think it's significant. It's pretty historic, and he ended up with yeah. five. Um, 50 goal seasons, his last one coming in 72. I mean, you could make the case still, he's the greatest left winger of all time. You could make that case wherever you want Slotty and Ovi, but it's either Hall or Ovi. And uh, Ovi didn't even start as a left winger, so I give the nod to Bobby, and uh, there you go. It sound, you know what? That sounds great. Well, that has been this week in hockey history. Hello, Canada. Lafleur. Coming out rather gingerly, back to the first. The Bossy shoots, he scores! This week in hockey history. All right, welcome back. We are now jumping to our next segment, which is Ask Liam, which is where we ask Liam a question, okay? And if he gets it correctly, uh, then that's great. And if he doesn't get it correctly, then I get a pitcher of beer. We, we know that. We've established that over here. Now, I have just restarted sipping on a lager, okay? Yeah. I, I was on dry, dry January. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I didn't succeed. I'm not blaming anybody. Yeah. Okay. Uh, dry February, and, and I tell you, I failed February. Is that a backhand I, shot at not no. at blaming me? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Uh, and, but I, I failed February, too, because when I was out in Arizona, yeah. Kristen and I went and had dinner and, and you know, Anyway, we got wine and then uh, whiskey sours, and next, next thing you know, um, did you did you go out to a nice restaurant? Went to a nice restaurant, and we stayed at a hotel. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Well, was it a nice restaurant? Uh, do you, you remember know like do you remember the name of it or anything? Or do I remember the name? Well, yeah. actually, I'm going to tell you a couple of restaurants we went to. But okay. So I, just, it's, I it's love called, stuff like that. All right. So, so so it's a restaurant in North Glendale. Okay. okay yeah. Called the Tipsy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it is, it's really unique because it's all couches and stuff. Like there's a nice bar area, but there's no tables per se. Okay. You sit down at a couch and you, and, and, and the food is 
freaking great. Okay. okay. Yeah. And so we had, anyways, you have a couple of drinks, you know, whatever. Then, you know what I mean? And we were going back, you know, to the hotel to, you know, to spend some private time. And, uh, and so I, I had a few drinks. So I lost uh, February. I, I failed a dry February. And then I haven't had anything though until just today. It's my first sip. So I'm just learning, relearning how to have a few beer. Uh, like riding a bike, like eh? Well, it's, you know what it is, except that I, I, if anybody who knows me from my childhood, you know how many bicycles I wrecked? <laughs> uh, well, as you know, Chris, uh, yeah. um, I had a dry two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. While, while, uh, while going through customs That's uh, right. to St. Pierre and Michelon. Okay. Yeah. Listen, so what we're going to, we're going to do the yeah. Ask Liam segment. Okay. Right. So here it comes. All right, welcome back to our Ask Liam segment of the show. So here's the, here's the question, and, and, and I know this. Do you want to explain how the question came up, and then I'll ask the question? Well, sure. I, mean, I was asked a question, and, and I, I was on the microphone in Philadelphia, and as I do everywhere I go, every time I'm on a microphone for decades, I always say, if anyone wants to come up and talk some hockey after, I'll be around till this bar closes, and I'm going to another one. So catch me at this one. Be easier. And some guys came up. Yeah. And we talked some hockey trivia, which was fantastic. And these guys came up, these two younger guys, they were they enjoyed their night so much. And they had a question, and they had it all written down and everything. The because eleven parter, which are tough to get on the spot. Right. But I can tell you right now, I wouldn't have got all I don't even know if I remember all eleven right now, but I'm gonna try. But do you wanna say the question or yeah. so the question So they asked me the question. So they asked you the question. And isn't it a beauty? It is a very good question. Yeah. How many goaltenders in NHL history have been scored on by both Wayne Gretzky and yeah. Alexander Ovechkin. I love it. Okay. Yeah. So that's so it's Gretzky and Ovechkin. Yeah. Okay. You threw me for a loop at first. Then you got to think. Wayne retires yeah. in '99. Ovi's first season is 0506. So you just got to start doing the math, the math there of, of who is around. And I'll be honest, I did not get all 11. I got five like almost immediately. Okay. And then they gave me a couple hints on two, and that got me up to seven. I had zero, like Mike Dunham is one of them. I wouldn't have got Mike Dunham in a hundred years. No. Uh, you know, I mean, a couple, you want to say obvious, but uh, I mean, I missed Eddie Belfour. I missed Sean, Sean Burke I got with a hint. Right, you know? okay. Uh, there was, there was um, uh, like Marty Brodeur, Dominic Ashik. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know where we we're up to, five. but uh, Ol- uh, Kolzig. Yeah. Is another. Uh, Dunham, as I said. Um, <clears throat> Sean Burke. Uh, um, Broder. And. Uh, uh, what about else? King Lindquist? Uh, yeah. No. Henrik? No. no. Wayne didn't score on uh, Lundquist. Yeah, yeah, he did in practice. That's my, that's my oh. little addendum. He's put <laughs> the puck in behind him. So there you go. That's yeah, right. well, I'm just being a bit, a bit yeah, of a dick. There. That wouldn't count, obviously. It wouldn't count, no. But I um, anyway, there's 11 in total. I can't remember them all right now. How many do you think we got there? I think you had six. That's okay. what we had. So okay. we got five more. We got five, yeah. So there was, there was like Mike Dunham, I just remember that one. It was tough as hell. Oh, Jaguar. John Zabasian oh, Jaguar. Okay. Is, 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 is another one. Um, uh, so Jaguar. Well, was Fleury around uh, back for Gretz? Um, no. No? Okay. No. No, he's 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 not in here. Does it matter if I, if I no no let, I, let's look it up because I, 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 I listen. I, I win. think I have it. We win. Oh, you have it written down? I think so. Okay, maybe not. Going, this know. is see this yeah. is so you people know that you're not actually a robot. Hashik, Broder, Kolzig, Burke, Jaguar, we all got. Yeah, Dunham. So okay. there's one, two, three, four, five. That's six, and uh, Belfour is seven. So okay. I missed Dunham. I missed Garth Snow. Garth I missed Snow. Kevin Weeks. Okay. I missed Habi Boulin. He's an Ottawa guy. Yeah, yeah, I missed him. Yeah, totally missed him. And Chris Osgood. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's the other okay. ones. I miss those guys. Uh, yeah. Not physically missing them right now yeah, yeah. for my life, but I miss. You know them what? I'll tell answer, you something. So. I actually miss Kevin Weeks because I played hockey with him a few times. Did you? And nice guy, eh? Yeah. And then oh, he, he's super nice guy. Then he got a he got a gig down south. Yeah. 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 He's uh, doing well. Yeah. So he's doing well. He's one of the eleven guys, and there's no other goalies playing. That played against Wayne, so that'll be the answer forever. Now, 11 parters, pretty tough. As you can tell, I couldn't even regurgitate it yeah. down. Now, I haven't committed it to memory yet, and I will, and then I'll remember it for all time. But 
At this point, I haven't, so I wasn't able to give you all 11 names. No, it was exactly. And you know what? It, uh, I would like you to do two things. If you're going to commit that to memory, and I'd like you to commit that to memory. I will. I would also like you to commit to memory the, uh, the lyrics to Rapper's Delight. Yeah. Okay, can you do that? Sure. Okay, all right. <laughs> You know how it goes, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, that was uh, our segment. Ask Liam. Guess who gets a case? Of, not a case. No, not a case. I gotta buy a. Yeah, you gotta uh, buy a picture. Co- I think a couple of jugs. There's a few jugs. Yeah. There's a few jugs in in credit. Yeah. It's all in credit. It's all banked. It's all banked. Maybe tonight right. we'll just settle up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, welcome back to Offside with Hosmer McGuire. And now we are jumping right to our segment, which is sponsored by the Patterson Group of Golf Courses. Uh, Emerald Links, yeah. uh, Anderson Links, yes, sir. and Cloverdale Links. Yeah, three, okay. great, three great tracks out here and, in the rural uh, South Ottawa. And, yeah, South is the main right. part of the city. That's right. Yeah, and, it's, and, like, uh, technically, uh, technically it's Ottawa. It's well, Ottawa. Cloverdale's not. Cloverdale's not Ottawa, yeah. but... Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're, it may be, is it not Ottawa anymore? No. No? No. Okay. Forward, I don't once, know. once you get past Osgood, that's the southern, most that's southern part you yeah. can go informally in the city of Ottawa. Okay. So, yeah. so anyhow, uh, on behalf of uh, our great friend, uh, Gib Patterson at Patterson Group of Golf Courses, yeah. um, where, by the way, I'm having, I, you don't even know this. I'm having my uh, my Hickory Golf Tournament. The very first Have you Hickory formally confirmed th- this? Confirmed. I've got people registered. What's already. the date? It's July the nineteenth. Okay, nice. and let's not talk about PEI right now. I don't yeah. want to fucking hear it. Yeah. Okay, but sucks. but I, I, it's July the nineteenth. What uh, day of the week the is Hick- it? It's a Friday. Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Hickory Golf Tournament. So playing with pre nineteen thirty five clubs. <clears throat> yeah. We're supplying all the clubs to people, so yeah. there's we got enough for everybody. It's going to be a small tournament, only like seventy two. So it's not a full right. one hundred and forty four. Right. Okay. So, but. Uh, we're playing this tournament at, at Emerald Links. We're doing a, uh, it's a fundraiser as well, okay, for a, and I'll, I'll formally announce the charity another time because, okay. uh, but it's a local children's charity Perfect. and it's not the fucking hospital, okay? Because right. everything's for Chio. This isn't for Chio. This is for the people who, you know, aren't in Chio. It's helping kids. Uh, but there's a, there's a, uh, what do you call that? Um, an element of health and mental and, all that other stuff involved in it. So it's, it, you'll like it, by the way. It's a local, you know. Anyhow, uh, so we're having that, okay, at, at, the, at the club. And so pretty excited about it. Love it. And you want to hear this? So we got some prizes, okay? And we have a charity auction after, right? So you get a hole in one, okay, on one particular hole. A uh, African safari. Yeah. I've got a sponsor to cover the cost. Wow. So uh, you get an African safari for two. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, that's a, um, that if, if you get the hole-in-one. Okay. If it, if it isn't one on the hole-in-one, yeah. it moves to the auction. And you can oh. auction. And this is a value of $25,000. Holy okay. cow. So wow. the, uh, another, another hole-in-one. Uh, uh, all right, is this an invite-only tourney, or how are you gonna? How no, you no, no, play? no. I, I, you know what? Here's the thing. I, the ideal is that people who want to try yeah. hickory golf. Oh, I okay? see. Okay, they yeah. want to try hickory golf. They want to get dressed up. They want to wear knickers. Yeah, they want yeah. to have fun. But they want to play with the the clubs that you know Bobby Jones yeah. and Harry Varden and those guys played with yeah. to see how different it is. Yeah. Right? Well, you've seen me play with mine. I have. And and yeah. and I know. And I ha- and honestly, I have never played well. When I play with Liam, it is uh, unfucking yeah, believable. You've got some good holes. No, no, yes, but I, it, I don't play my game for whatever reason. I just I something. And now, granted, I was having really issue like back problems a couple yeah, times. Yeah, your back but, was hurting. But but, but it doesn't. Tight. Your balls are shaking from left to right. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyhow, so that's what, and you know another one is a trip for two. Wow. To South Gore. Golf. No, 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 to Ireland. What? A go- a go- and a, yeah, so I've got a sponsor for that, okay? Oh. And that the value of that trip with everything involved in it is almost $25,000 as well. Sweet okay? Jesus. So, so then uh, we're going to do uh, a couple. We have auction items. We got, so we got money. We got all that. It's, uh, it's really coming together. It's going to be an event. 
the um, Society of Hickory Golfers in the United States and actually worldwide. It's the worldwide organization. Yeah. <clears throat> they're, they're sponsoring it. Like they're a part of it. Uh, the Golf Historical <laughs> Society of Canada is going to be in attendance. Whoa. And they have, they have helped me get all the clubs okay. to give to people. Yeah. Uh, so well, good for you, uh, Chris. Yeah, you know, it's, it's coming along. So I, I, thank, uh, I thank Gib for uh, all the support uh, there. Now, let's talk, talk in history here. Yeah. Uh, boy, oh boy. Buckle up your chin strap for this interview. We're very pleased to announce yeah. the, uh, the first segment yeah. of our interview with uh, the, the number one goal scorer, splash point getter, uh, up until Wayne Gretzky broke his record, okay, is who's who our guest is today. Uh, the none other than uh, Sault Ste. Marie native. Yep. Okay. Northern Ontario, Chris. Yeah. Sault Ste. Marie native. Uh, Phil Esposito. Yeah. I get chills because this was a um, w- one of the most exciting moments. Uh, I, I know. And as you know the interview I mean? goes along, people will see that in you, I think. And um, it always is for me anytime I'm around him. It was the first time I think you got to meet yeah, him. Yeah. He was your father's favorite player, yeah. which comes out late in the interview. You won't see it on this part, I don't believe. But, but uh, you're going to roll them out here as we do the shows. And uh, I really encourage people, at, at your convenience, take the time and, and listen to this guy. I, I know everyone's heard him and seen him. It's not like he's been a shrinking violet no. for his career, uh, such as it is. And he's still working in the business. He's still doing yeah. Tampa Bay home games on radio. He's 81 or 2 82. years old. Turned 82. 82 in Turned February. 82, February 20th. And... and uh, it's, he's just he's just a prince of a man. He's messaged both of us. Yeah. Oh, since since yeah. we've gotten back initially, the message was, "Did you guys get home okay?" Yeah. You know, did you get home okay? Like, who does that? Who well, does you know, that? It, you know what? It just goes to show the quality of the individual. Bought us all lunch. You know? Bought us all lunch. Kevin Jardine and you know his brother-in-law were there. Yeah. Uh, names Kevin yeah. gets mentioned on the show here every now and then. Local guy, one of my best friends, goaltender in the area, well known. In Florida at the time, his brother-in-law, Larry Monahan, Kevin's wife's brother, one of her brothers, they came yeah. and sat in on the interview. They joined us for lunch. Phil didn't care. Bought us all lunch after and uh, recommended yeah. the steak sandwich. I remember Larry Monahan was going to have something else and Phil looked at him and Larry went, uh, steak sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, I had the steak sandwich and it was great. <laughs> we all had the great. steak sandwich. It was great. Phil said, have the steak sandwich. You're going, okay, okay. All right. Have the steak yeah. sandwich. But it was Fantastic. It was. Uh, it All right. Well, listen, yeah. let's... Uh, shooting the shot. Shooting the shot. Yeah. It's shooting. I've been, I've been yeah. corrected shooting. on that. Shooting. Shooting with yeah. an N. Yeah, that's, that's the, good. Yeah, not yeah. Yeah. Shooting the shot yeah. with uh, Haas and McGuire. This week, we're shooting the shot with Phil Esposito. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Offside with Haas and McGuire and our new segment, which is called Shooting the Shot. Sh- that's right. Shooting the shot. And today, our guest is none other than... Number seven, and if you say number seven, that's all you have to say is Phil Esposito. And uh, so, Liam, why don't you give us some stats first? Well, we'd be here ten minutes, but listen, uh, <laughs> there are some numbers that that do that do bear being mentioned for sure. Uh, the guy played eighteen years in the NHL. Phil, thank you so much. First, an honor to have you. Uh, Seven hundred and seventeen goals. First guy to have a hundred point season. First guy with five fifty goal seasons. Two Stanley Cups. Um, 76 goal season in 1971 was the standard until yeah. it was broken by Gretzky. Uh, no one had even come close to 76 when he broke Bobby Hull's record, his former linemate and teammate with Chicago. And uh, the All-Star Games, the 100 point seasons, the, the Stanley Cups, all aside from Team Canada 72, which we will get to. I think everybody can see him wearing a, one of the replica jerseys, which Phil just added his name to the list of signatures here. And I'll finish on this note because some of his other stats will come out later. But I will finish on this note by way of introduction. Phil Esposito played the greatest 20 minutes of hockey in the history of the sport. Third period, game eight, Thursday, September 28, 72. That is beyond reproach. It was said by Paul Henderson on national TV when Team Canada was declared the team of the century on November 10, 2000. I was on the set with him when Paul said it, and it's and it's 100% true. So I'll finish on that note. The greatest 20 minutes ever played in the history of the sport by this man who's joining, shooting the shot with offside with Haas and McGuire right now. Phil Esposito, what an honor, man. Thank you, Liam. What an honor. Well, yeah, we'll do that shake, too. Let me put it this way. I wasn't going to lose. 
I, 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 I know that. I'm well, going to let them beat us. Listen, we may as well. We're, we're, go, we're open the door there, and we, we've got some other stuff that we were talking about before. Let's just let's just go to 72 right now, then. Absolutely. And, you know, Phil, you weren't going to lose. Can you just? I mean, do no. you recall them saying that they were going to take victory if the game stayed tied? I didn't realize that until I heard it, somebody come over and whispered in uh, Harry's ear or Fergie's ear and then uh, it spread like wildfire on the bench uh, that they were claiming victory if the game was tied. Well, I, I wasn't, it didn't bother, you know, I didn't care about that. But I, I'll say this, when Henny scored, it's the closest I've ever come to kissing another guy. I can tell you right now. Well, there you have it. <laughs> I, I did. I mean, he. I wasn't coming. The guys were jumping off the ice and stuff, and I stayed on. And, and I know that I teed off a lot of our guys that were behind me. I know that. I know Clarky was waiting. I know Ratty was waiting. Yeah. I, but I just felt myself that I wouldn't lose if I stayed on the ice. Yeah. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. I, I just, I felt that. Just like Henderson, why did he call Peter Mahalo I know. Why? I know. Yeah. It wasn't his turn to come. No. But he called Pete off. There was something. And I really think you know, God has a way of, <laughs> of rectifying a lot of wrong. Because it was communism against capitalism. That's what it turned out to be. And I blame both countries. Yeah. I do. It turned political. Uh, unfortunately, we were the pawns. And I got to be real good friends with Yakashev and Tretyak. Yep. Even Boris Mihailov, who I didn't like I know. at all. I know. Didn't like. That's him you're him. calling on in the penalty box where you're doing this? Well, the son of a bitch speared me. Yeah. You know where. Yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't. I couldn't get him back because if I did anything I would be in a penalty box yeah. and that wasn't where I should be no and I knew it so I had to take it suck it up and take whatever they gave me because I had to be on the ice in my mind I had to be on the ice wrong or right it turned out right yeah could have turned out wrong but it turned out right. It turned out right. Yeah. I mean, and the, the rest is history. The, the yeah. rest is history. Well, like Chris, you would you would talk you would touch. We've got it on tape already yeah. about the speech. In oh, I, well, so yeah, well, so this know, was that was prior. Though. Like I, I mean, I that, know, that yeah. moment, uh, the, the twenty minutes, uh, I you know, of the greatest hockey ever played. Yeah. Which, by the way, I don't know, Manitick League uh, Thursday nights. Yeah. Well, Hatter can attest to that. <laughs> uh, but with all of your accolades, I'm going to take it there. I'm sorry. Yeah, with all your accolades, um, with 162 points? 152. 152. 76 and 76. Okay. 150, the, the, the most prolific scorer in NHL history up to that moment, up to Wayne Gretzky coming along. And, and, and blowing me away. No, Bill no, Wayne but the point is, so one guy, big big deal. One guy no, in a, in a very best. different league. I know he is. But, <laughs> but you've had that. You had like the elation of, of winning in 72. You've had the Stanley Cup that you've hoisted over your head more than once. No, I never did. Oh, you didn't have it more than, I thought you I never it. put it over my head. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Right. We didn't do that stuff. No. Yeah. No, we didn't no. take it home. No. I mean, we didn't happen didn't at that time. They we stole it one time and put it in a bar, but <laughs> the cops so, came and got it. Where was the so, bar? 99 down the road from the Boston Garden. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. But uh, other than that... Uh, no, we weren't allowed to do that. We had it in our dressing room. And the difference is, you know, we would fill it with champagne and drink beer. Now they fill it with beer and drink champagne. Yeah. Uh, you know what? That's a great line. That's a great line. But, write, well, write that down. I will write that down. I'll just remember it. But listen, the speech. The thing is, and we oh, yeah. talked about it, but the thing is, Phil, because there's where a lot of people get wrong. The team never saw it, right? The, no. The team didn't. I never saw it for 10 years. Later. 10 years. 10 years. And I remember it was our 10th anniversary. It came up. I don't know. It was one of the breweries we went to. It might have been Labatt's or it might have. Cardinal O'Keefe was still around yeah. then, too. Yeah, they were big. Yeah. And Molson, of course, of course, was around. Yeah. And I don't know which one it was. can't remember. And they played it. My first instinct, to be honest, honest, 
I was embarrassed. I got embarrassed. I, I went, oh man. Was because it a bad I, angle or? No, it was just that I, I, I kept saying things like, I can't believe it, I can't believe it, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was so emotional. I felt so bad for Billy Goldsworthy, what they did and how they booed him. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt bad for the guys, some of the guys in our team. I did. I knew that we could never win until we became a team. And after the very first game, when I went with Harry Sinden to the podium, I, as we're walking in Montreal Forum, I said to Harry, Harry, these guys are good. You better pick 20 guys and make us a team. Yeah. And if I'm not on one of them, don't worry about it. It's okay. But you better pick 20 guys and make a team or else we're not going to win this. Yeah. And unfortunately, everybody was promised to play yeah. a game. If we had done that, we would have lost. Yeah. You cannot win in a team sport unless you're a damn team. Yeah. Simple. Yeah. And i tell you the truth, I would have never retired in January, halfway through the season, if the New York Ranger hockey team was better. Wayne wouldn't have retired halfway through the season if that team was better. If the team is good, you got a chance to win. Right. Yeah. If the team is bad and you're 38, 39 years old or going on 40 like I was, what the hell are you doing? They've got to replace you with younger people because if that's the name of the game, yeah. to get younger and better. And old guys, we're not old. Right? We're just hitting the prime of our life at 40, for yeah. crying out loud, really. And, but in sport, especially with the hockey, it's over the hill. I hear people talking about Ovechkin now. That, oh boy, he's just too old. Baloney, his team isn't good around him. You've got to have good people around when you play a team sport. Well, you have had experience in upper management of a particular yeah. hockey team in Florida. Okay, if you were the GM of uh, Washington right now, what changes would you make to help Ovechkin achieve what he wants? You can't, because of salary cap issues. You can't make, you don't trade players anymore, you trade money. Right. And because of salary cap, which, if it wasn't in instituted, teams like Tampa, the Panthers, Carolina would have never survived. Right. I mean, I remember when we first started here in Tampa, 92, my budget was $8.5 million for everything. The Rangers were close to 80 million. How in the hell could we survive? Yeah. Yeah. Can't do it. No way, yeah, yeah. You know, I so the, 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 the came in where the, you had a cap, was very, very important. The problem is, guys will go for the Stanley Cup now and trade round, first round picks and right. trade this to win now. Right. Because let's face it, a general manager or coach doesn't have a long shelf life. Right. John Cooper has been here, what, 11 years, I think? Yeah. That's the longest I ever saw a coach stay yeah. in one place. In, if you in, think in this about era. It. Yeah. In this era. Yeah, very rare. Yeah, since the expansion. Yeah. And yeah. all that other stuff in this yeah. era. So, yeah. that's good, right? Yeah. But we've changed general managers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's still a fact about the money. Now, we go to the cap. In fact, that's one of the things that is a problem. We're, we're at the cap. Like Toronto, they've got five guys that are going to be around $60 million next year. How in the hell at $85 million, $25 million more, yeah. or 87 is it going to? I think it's going end? up $4 million. It's going to go to 86 yeah. and change. Yeah. 86 and change. Yeah. How do you, $26 million for the rest of the team? I know. There's no way. How do you do it? You can't. There, you can't win the cup. I don't care who the that. hell the general manager is. No, no. I'll How be honest, Phil, it? I'm going to double shift. Ha, ha, ha.
Phil did. You know what? <laughs> no, you do it. You go down to three players and five defensemen like that's we right. used to play, <laughs> and you pay the son of a bitches, and you keep on going. Well, that's <laughs> another way, you know. So I, but I, you can't do that because of the players association. Well, that's, Excuse yeah. me, the union now. Yeah. Which well, I'm against. That's a whole other. St- I mean, yeah. you got a situation now with the salary cap. Where in some instances, you can't even dress a full lineup. You have Sometimes, to play a player right. short. That's already happened two or three times this year. And and you can't even get an emergency recall till you play a player short. It's all convoluted. The it's panic safe. of yeah. not having six defensemen on four lines yeah. is ridiculous. I know. I know. I, in my estimation. Yeah. And people, when I say that to people that are in the game now, yeah. ah, you're the old school. You yeah. bet you're a sweet bit by him. Yeah. I mean, we played with three lines for the temper. I averaged probably almost 35 to 40 minutes a game. Bobby Orr probably played over 40 minutes a I, game. I know. And, and, no and, doubt. And, and look at the success. Yeah. So I did mean, Dennis Potvin. Yeah. Even in yeah. that era, you yeah. know? Yeah. So come on. I, did it. I'm still going. Scotty <laughs> routinely double shifted the flirt in the late yeah. 70s. I mean, he got I, a ton of ice. If you're paying a guy 13, 14 million dollars, he better be playing and he better be producing. Yeah. And, yeah. This 20 minute rule, I don't understand it. Yeah. Oh, 20 minutes. Oh, he's playing 20 minutes. He's got to be tired. Yeah. Tired so, after 20 minutes? Since when? I know, I know. They're it's supposed it's to be in the greatest shape. I know. Of all time. I, I know. They look good on the beach. They yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> now, we didn't look so good. In fact, when I laid on the beach, people wanted to harpoon me. <laughs> Hold on. But I get lost. <laughs> yeah. we, we, I gotta go back to 72. We can't okay. just skate over. Let me, let me, let me, I got Phil. Hold on. Have, just one question. Yeah. Are you you're fixated on 72? Right? No, but we opened the door. We did open the door. Yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just, <laughs> just saying. It's like there, you know what? He, it's, Am I it's, fixated? Yeah. You're fixated. I just want to point that yeah, out. Yeah. But look who we got here. Yeah. So oh, no, I know. Yeah. Oh no, I absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We gotta do a couple things. Liam's Phil. gonna ask you some questions about 1970. <laughs> really. <laughs> Are you going to do it again, Chris? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen. Uh, you've already said some things. A lot of emotion. Do you have any Do you have any hard feelings towards Hadfield, Gouvermont, Martin, and Peril? Absolutely not. If okay. I wasn't playing, I wouldn't have stayed either. Yeah. I wouldn't have stayed in Russia. Yeah. I can't believe guys like Bobby yeah. and Wayne. Wayne Cashman with that tongue. With the tongue, yeah. Holy crap, man. Yeah. I would have been long gone. People hated me? Too bad. Yeah. I'm not staying in that godforsaken country back in 1972. Yeah. Now, I've been back there. Yeah. On 2012, I went back for the 40th anniversary. I was reluctant to do it. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. My brother wouldn't, he wouldn't go near it. I sat right across from Putin at the luncheon. Right, and I looked him right in the eye, this guy. I didn't, and he asked me one question. Why weren't you embarrassed when you fell on your butt? No, he didn't say butt, he said ass, okay? Yes. And I went, hmm. Well, you can either laugh about it or cry about it, yeah. and I chose to laugh about yeah. it. Yeah, you did yeah. the great thing like this, and yeah. everybody. And he says, if it were me, through the interpreter, although he yeah, understood yeah. everything, yeah. he said, I would have buried my hand, my head in the <laughs> ice like an ostrich. <laughs> and I looked at him, I said, that was you, not yeah. me. Yeah, and and I've seen him play, and he should bury his head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I played against him. I wouldn't let him score. The guys, Kasatonov said, "You gotta let the president score." I said, "Like hell, I'm gonna let him score." <laughs> I went behind him, picked up the stick. Good I for did. you. I did. That's awesome. I dude. call him rootin' tootin' Putin. He laughed. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the I liked the man at that time. He was okay. He looked me in the eyes. He had a twinkle in his eyes. Now when I see him on television doesn't look like the same human being. No, no. It doesn't look like this, and that's why I haven't gone back. Yeah. In fact, my, my, um, let me show you. This is my, my what? space saver on, yeah, yeah, on your I, phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, do, do it to this one, and they'll see it better. Right here. One minute. Let me. Yep. That's my thing, and that's in Red Square in 2018. No way. Wow. Yeah. We used to go there and play it's hockey. Not, it's, now, it's now my screen saver, by the way. We, we used to play on the, on Red Square. Yakashev and I would, because it was like 300 feet long. Yeah. We'd stand at the red line waiting <coughs> for Guys, come on. Yaki and I, it was funny. He, so, you really have become friends with him, eh? And is he I down have, here? Huh? No, no, he no, he's no, he's no, he, 
He doesn't speak. He doesn't speak uh, English very well, and I certainly don't speak Russian. But after four or five vodkas, we understood each other perfectly. <laughs> Phil, there, nothing. There's never been in the history of sports, any sport, at any time, has ever happened a moment that happened in Game Eight when Cornway tied it up. The goal like didn't go on, and Eagleson's going off. Yeah. And a bunch of guys, Bergman, Little M, went over the boards. Team came around. Peter. Like Peter was the. They're guy carrying guns. You guys got hockey sticks. Do you do you remember? what you were feeling at that time when that went down? He was part of our group. Yeah. Didn't matter my personal feelings. Um, my personal feelings, I would have let him stay there yeah. and go to jail. <laughs> but that's another story. But he was part of the team. Yeah. And I don't care. I often said to Ronnie Duguay, I said it to. I said it to Barry Beck. I said it to Donnie Murdoch and Ronnie Gressman when I went to the Rangers. Doesn't matter. I, I don't like everybody I played with personally but when I was on that stinking ice they were my teammate they were my family yeah and nobody was gonna mess and nobody messes with me and nobody messes with them we stick up for yeah. one another and that's what a team is you got to have that bonding yeah you don't have to go out and have social with them you don't have to drink with them all the time or go to yeah. dinner but on that stinking ice boy that's your teammate, and you better stick up with them. Did, did the games against Sweden, those two games, when we talked about Wayne Cashman, I believe he got speared by Ulf Sterner, I think. It was. And, and it was oh, vicious, it was knocked smooth. him out. He, was, he, had, he had played decently the games in Canada, I thought, when he dressed. He was terrific. He was terrific. He would have been an incredible asset. Anyways, you lose him. But did the games in Sweden help you guys? Without a doubt. Yeah. We okay. became a team in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. I remember sitting in... Uh, Across from the Grand Hotel, it was like a little park or something. Yeah. Gila Point's Gila wife. Gila Point's wife had just given just birth. Just birth, and yeah. we had a couple of cases, or maybe a couple of cases of beer. Yeah. And we all sat there, and we were celebrating, to, and we st we started to gel. Yeah. And I remember Eagleson coming in and telling us that the Russians don't want to allow the women or anybody to come over to Moscow. Yeah. They want to change the the game plan they don't want to allow it and I'm, I think it was me that said why don't you and Harry and Fergie get out of here and let's talk and we all talked about it and we said if they change the deal we're gone we're going home the deal stuck we shook hands we made a deal we'll stick by our word and that's as good as you can get you've got to stick by your word and you did it and so we told Eagleson we either get to allow the wise which in retrospect, was a stupid idea. They should have stayed home because <laughs> yeah. it couldn't even feed them. Couldn't feed them. We had to, have to sneak food to them. Was your food stolen? Absolutely. Your, your beer yeah. stolen? The beer really pissed us off. But it really did. <laughs> but that's another story. But um, they did. It was. It was taken. I mean, I ate horse meat, blackbird. I remember that. Holy crap. I couldn't believe that. And Look, I lost 14 pounds over that. Really? Wow. Jesus. I weighed 228, 229 when I was playing over there. When I got back, I was about 214, 212. I'm on the next plane. <laughs> Not anymore. No. no. Trust me. <laughs> they are more capitalistic now than... It's changed. Uh, yeah. they're, uh, they're in New York on steroids. Really? In Moscow. Chris oh, and yeah. I were talking driving here about the fans that went, yeah. the Canadian fans, and I they said unbelievable. you would make that statement. Unbelievable. They were, I think the Russians were shocked, the fans, yeah. that they were so boisterous and so loud, but for us, man, it was terrific. And the telegrams yeah. that lined our walkway into our dressing room. Yeah. And that was the other thing, it was really weird. Women would come in, and I mean, they were older women, you know, with the mop and a thing, and while we're getting dressed, and they're mopping the floors. And, I mean, we couldn't understand all that. I remember saying to one, out, out, yet, she go, yet. In other words, she's got to clean. Right. If she didn't clean, who knows? They sent her to Siberia or something. I don't know. <laughs> and I, we were like, well, the hell with it. We let them do it. We just... 
undressed and got dressed and went in the shower. It didn't matter. It just didn't matter. Wow. I only got two more. Oh, yeah, no, no. On 72. By okay. the way, most of the women had more hair under their arms and on their legs than I did. <laughs> I believe it. Look at the East German swim team in the 72 Olympics. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> we all know they were they men. They them. No, no, no. Listen, what did you think when the J.P. Parise incident happened there at the start of Game 8? Like, uh, what was your sense of... Because things had, things had been so crazy, and this was the start of the game. You know, people don't know. JP had never been uh, received a game misconduct in hockey, never. and he never received one since. But you know what, Phil? After he did that, he got kicked out. If you look at the stats and you watch that game, game eight, the greatest moment, greatest <laughs> game, they called it fairly after that. Compel and batter those two useless. We believe, or at least I did, that they were influenced because hundred percent, without a doubt, 100%. you know, their families were in jeopardy. Yeah, not them so much as the families. I mean, that was rampant. Even the Russians admitted to me in that in 2016, yeah. that things were, they were intimidated also. Their families were intimidated by yeah. the political bureau, you know? Right. They so were all promised new cards if they won and they didn't give them the cards. They didn't give them anything. They didn't give them anything. I remember Petrov coming back from uh, Canada. Yeah. He had on five pair of jeans. Five pair of jeans. They didn't think that yeah. he he looked heavier, but they didn't think. They pulled him off and gave him to his brother, went to his brother. And Unbelievable. That. Yeah. Unbelievable. They live like kings here. Yeah. yeah. They got all the equipment. They got everything. You know, yeah. I mean, we gave them everything. Yeah. And they had a taste. They got a taste. I remember after the series, I said to Yaki, Yaki, come to Boston. I get you $100,000 play in Boston. He go, no, no. Come Moscow. I get you apartment. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a hell of an apartment. <laughs> it better be. <laughs> I'll never forget that. I looked at him like, are you nuts out of your mind? <laughs> oh, that's Phil, I uh, got to finish on 72 unless you have anything else, Chris. But got to finish on this one. Uh, you scored seven goals. Yakishev scored seven goals. So did Paul Henners. He got the game winners in the last three. You played against Paul. He came in the league shortly after, like right around the same time yeah. as you. Uh, he's with Detroit, goes to Toronto. You know all this. But let's plain and simple. You call, you've always called the spade a spade. Do you think Paul Henderson should be in the Hall of Fame? My honest opinion, no. No? But there's a lot of guys I don't think should be in the Hall of Fame right yeah. now. Yeah. And that's my opinion. Yep. Um, it's supposed to be on a body of work in the NHL. Yeah. Period. And now Yakushev and Harlamov and Tretiak are all in. Body of work in the NHL. Yeah. Now, they include the world now. Yeah. And that's a different thing. But at the beginning, when I went in, it was a body of work in the NHL. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you think it's watered down? Look, I, I'm not saying going to say, do guys deserve it? If, the, if that's what the people think and that's yeah. what the guys that are voting yeah. think, who am I to say no? It's my opinion. But opinions are like, you know what? Yeah. Everybody has one. Not well, let's make, I'm going to make try to make this fucking jolly now. Okay, Chris. Okay. Don't worry, uh, I can get there. Okay. <laughs> so I had started by saying, you know, you have all these accolades. <coughs> if you could point to one, and I know this is going to be next to impossible. No, it's not. It's not? No. What's the one? The greatest thing I ever achieved in my life was getting the Tampa Bay Lightning. Yeah. Ever. They can take me out of the Hall of Fame as a player, but put me in as a builder. Yeah. Because I did more as a builder than I did as a player. God gave me talent to play, and I exploited that talent. He didn't give me talent to go and raise $55 million and to start a franchise. Yeah. But I did it. I hired good people, and I made sure that people around me would carry out what I wanted because I didn't know how. But and you build, you build always your team. have again people around you. Well, it always comes back to that team comment. Absolutely. You made. So I had to get a team that would I give the ideas and everything else, and they had to implement them because I didn't I didn't right. go to college. You know, I got kicked out of grade thirteen. Out of two schools I went through. Which because, ones? Uh, one was in Sarnia, Ontario. It was uh, a Catholic high school in the, 
and the mother superior called me a hockey puck. And and I went, ooh. Yeah. I said, well, I didn't come here to go to school. Yeah. I came to play hockey. And she said, well, you're expelled. I thought you were playing junior B with the Legionnaires. I was Legionnaires. playing junior B. Yeah. But I was making 10 bucks a week playing. Yeah. They were paying my, my dad was sending me 10 bucks a week. And I got a job for forty dollars a week as a janitor. I was in heaven, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like sixty bucks a week. Yeah, it was happy. great. Yeah, yeah. They were. And you had twelve points in a game. I bought all the hot hamburgers. <laughs> bought all the hot hamburgers. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I know you tore that league up. So, I know, and it's 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 not a secret uh, how close you were with your brother. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, two not kids. Not close enough. No. We weren't close enough because of the separation distance. Tony would come back to the Sioux, and Tony became an American citizen in 80 to play for... Uh, Team USA. Team USA yeah. for some reason. I forgot what the reason was. Like the 81 Canada Olympic. Cup, I believe. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, um, and I never did. And I never gave up my citizen. I didn't give up. I just got another... I got an American passport, and I'm a dual citizen. Yeah, you know, so um, I keep my American Canadian passport. Absolutely, I'm born in Canada. I'm a Canadian. You can't take that. You can't deny that. And I keep telling people that when they say, well, "I'm I'm an Italian American." I say, "Where were you born?" Best thing. I'm signing autographs in Chicago one time. This guy comes up and he says, "It was a black dude," and he says. You signed for a brother? I said, sure. He says, where were you born? He says, Chicago. I said, so you, you're an American? He said, I'm African American. I said, where were you born? He says, Chicago. So you're born in the USA, right? He said, yeah. I said, so you're an American African. He said, no, I'm African American. I said, where were you born? Yeah, the guy looked at me and he goes, I never thought about that. Politicians don't think about it either. But it's people very on television that do the news don't think about it. Yeah. And personally, I think it separates. Absolutely. Yeah. It separates because you've got to be proud of from where you were born. Yeah. Your ancestors, sure, you can have some pride with that. But do I know anybody in Italy? No. Nobody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're I'm responsible sure. for uh, indirectly for Wayne Gretzky wearing 99. How? Because I wore 77. Yeah. Yeah, but he was wearing 99 in the WHA, wasn't he? No. 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 He was in the suit. Yeah. Playing in the suit, wearing 14 and 12. I mean, even when you went to the Rangers, you could because you couldn't get seven, right? Because yeah. of Gilbert. Yeah. Fergie. Fergie actually came up with it. I mean, I was wearing 12, I think. Yeah. And then. Uh, John and I, Fergie, look, Fergie and I had a little bit of a relationship because of 72. Yeah. yeah. And I really liked John. Yeah. I liked him a lot. And we we got along. Like, he took me with him to Winnipeg to get Anders Hedberg and Nielsen. Right. Okay. Yeah. Fulton, yeah. You know, and I went with him. And, um, but there was a special thing because of Team Canada. Yeah. I said the same thing to Harry Sinden when he traded me, and then I, he never called me to tell me. It hurt me. Yeah. It hurt me that he didn't tell me. He made Don Cherry tell me, and that bothered me, boy. That bothered me big time. Because honestly, Harry owed me a phone call. For sure. To tell me yeah. that I got traded. Yeah. And especially since when I 12 games in and we signed and we shook hands, he said, do you want a no trade in your contract? I looked at him and I said, do I need it after 72? If we lose, yeah. he'll never get a job in hockey you know, again, neither absolutely. with Fergie. That's right, yeah. Okay, and I had a, something to do with winning. So, I figured at least a phone call, Harry. Yeah. And it took me a long time to get over it, and obviously, I'm still probably not all the way over it. Yeah. All these years later, yeah, because I loved playing in Boston. Yeah, I did. I gotta admit, I did. 
there was something about the old garden yep. and something about that black jersey with the broom crest on it that was prideful to me. Yeah. Really prideful. And I gave up a lot of money in the WHA to stay there. Yeah. But we imagine. Crap happens. <laughs> but the trade from Chicago to Boston, I know it wouldn't have been near the same. Well, I knew I was gone. You did, eh? Oh, yeah, because I, Bobby Hull used to get me in so much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he really? Did. But in Bobby's defense, I learned more about life and about hockey from Bobby Hull than anybody else in the world. Yeah. Really? I'll tell you what. If there was a better guy for me at that, that time when I'm 21 years old, yeah. 22, to learn about the life. I remember going to New York the first time we took the train from Chicago. I'm walking around and I'm looking at, he says, be careful you look at a sunburn on the roof of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Then I bought a watch. I paid $25 for it. We go into the dressing room. I look, look at a watch, guys. Bobby looks at it, he shakes it, and the bottom, the bottom <laughs> fell out, and there was nothing in it. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you got rock, kid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Robert was... Well, we'll get you a new watch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I it may not have anything inside he, of it either. He says that was the worst trade in Chicago history. Bobby always, God rest his yeah. soul. Uh, I mean, he, well, it was, but uh, Billy Ray and I didn't get along. So yeah. I don't know why... I, uh, like you were seventh in scoring that year. It made no sense. The trade. Well, game. the three years in Chicago, somebody told me just recently, first year I was there, I was 11th. Second yep. year, I was 9th. Yep. Third year, I was 7th. Yep. So I was obviously moving up. Absolutely. And yep. Boston, the first year, I ended up second. Stan beat me out in the yeah. last, game, last day. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And um, I remember, too, I had 49 goals, but I scored 50. Then Puck went in the net to this day. That puck went in the net, and I had a $10,000 bonus. Nice. And I never got it. What? Never gave it to they me. Never, they never gave him the goal. I they never gave me the goal. They oh. didn't have a video replay back then. Oh, I see but I know that puck went in the net. I yeah. see it right now. I'm thinking about it. But. Oh, it's 68. Yeah. You know, those, yeah. Were, the, those were the days that back then. Yeah. But uh, look, I am so blessed with being able to sit with guys like you and talk about this sort of stuff. And it gets my memory jogging, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I like that because yeah. I, I remember things from way back when and I remember some of the stories that we can't even say on. Well, on I, actually, that's what I, I want to. I want to take you. No, no, that you direction. can't do that. No, no, so I, I have, a, I have a way of doing. We can edit all that stuff. Oh, out. I'm sure you do. You're giving him the big wink. <laughs> nice try, yeah. Chris. No, no. I, what I was going to say is that the Tampa Bay uh, establishment uh, was one of your greatest. Was your greatest success? Was, without, without a doubt. So, throughout that, tell me some of the challenges that you've had in that. That you that you feel great about, like I mean, I know that I like all of the raising money. In the and first all that place, stuff, it cost me a divorce, it cost me every penny that I ever had in the world, every penny. I was flat busted, flat busted. Eagleson tried to screw me big time. I had more. And a guy named David Fever tried to screw me. A guy named George Steinbrenner tried to screw me, and I fought them all off. And believe me, it was a fight to the finish. Good. But I was content on being here. If I had to, I'd go sell cars on Florida Avenue. But I wasn't leaving Tampa Bay. I wasn't. And this is the place I was wanted to be and retire here and live here for the rest of my life. I was sick and tired of the Northeast, sick and tired of the cold, and I didn't want any more part of it. And I wanted to put this team here. I was on the marketing committee as a player. And I was on the marketing committee as a general manager. I knew they wanted to expand, but they told me to stay away from Texas. I told Johnny Ziegler, I don't want to go to Texas. See, I didn't know Minnesota the next year moved yeah. to Dallas. <clears throat> yeah. See, that deal was already been in process, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? <clears throat> so I didn't know that, but I wanted Florida. I yeah. wanted Florida. I went to Orlando, they threw me out. 
because they had basketball. Went to Miami because they had buildings. They had buildings. Yeah. Miami threw me out, basketball. Then I met a guy named Henry Paul. Henry Paul's father was Gabe Paul, who was president of the Yankees, Cleveland Indian baseball guy. Okay. Try to bring baseball here early on. I met with him, it met Henry, and Henry's an attorney, and maybe one of the only attorneys I really like. <laughs> no offense to the rest yeah. of the attorneys, but I don't know. At the end of this meeting I had with him, I looked at him in the eye, and I just like I'm doing to you, Chris, and I said, do you think hockey could survive in this market? He said, well, we love football, we love car crashes, we love boxing, and we love wrestling. Seems to me you got it all in hockey. And I went, I'm going for it, are you with me? We shook hands, never had a piece of paper, we're still partners. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. And is he still around? Absolutely, when Tony and I got bought out, and we got bought out and fired by that lunatic, Art Williams, who was a lunatic. Should have been in jail for what he did for people. But that's another story. Henry quit. They wanted him to work with Jock DeMare, who they made general manager. And, and Jock called him and Henry said, no, I'm, I'm going back to my own practice. He's an attorney. He said, if Phil and Tony are gone, I'm gone. You don't find loyalty like that. No, 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 no. no. It's, you know it's I mean? very it's rare. That level. Very and rare. When you, when, and when you have it, you know it. Right? You know it. Yeah. Oh, Chris, you know it. And to this day, like, I almost invited Henry here today, but he said he had to go and do some lawyer work. I said, oh, boring. <laughs> Man, <that laughs> he said, been, I know well, that, it yeah. is. That would have been amazing. Not being, yeah. He remembers a heck of a lot more about the forming of this because, like I said, I used to say, this is what I think should be done. Can we do it? Yeah. I don't want you to tell me, Henry, you can't do it. I want you to do it. I remember this guy from the securities that a lawyer comes in and says, you can't do that, Phil. They won't allow you with the Securities Exchange Commission and all that. I looked at him <laughs> and I said to him, I said, listen, it was 9.30 at night. Okay, we had been there all day. And I said, if you don't get it done, don't come back, because if you do, I'm going to throw you through the window. You understand? Get it done. I don't want to know how, and I don't care how. Just get it done. Two days later, he says, I can't believe it. I got it done. I said, see what you can do when you apply yourself? Were you surprised Ottawa was in there with you, that they got the I'm team? I'm sorry? Were you surprised the Senators and came in with Tampa? No, I wasn't <coughs> surprised by the Senators getting it because it was, Hamilton was come see, come Yeah, they, they were, yeah. and Toronto wasn't going to let Hamilton come in on no. an expense. They, and Buffalo wasn't either. Yeah. The television was too great yeah. around there. And great, you knew it. If you didn't know it and you didn't know what you were doing, yeah. and so Ottawa, I didn't think was was a problem. Um, it was far enough away from Montreal, far enough away from Toronto that they could have their own sphere and everything else. And and tell you the truth, Roy Firestone was a nice guy. He yeah. really was. Yeah, it was Roy. Was Bruce. No, Bruce. 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 Yeah. Roy Firestone Roy's was that other guy. guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. The TV guy. Yeah. Bruce Fire. Yeah. Uh, but I do remember. And I, I say this in all due respect to them, at the draft, the expansion draft, they weren't prepared like we were. No. They well, weren't. I think that became evident. Yeah. But they didn't they didn't give us like the third goalie, you know? No. Or right. we gotta take the fifth defense. No, you got scratched. The following year, yeah. which we were promised they wouldn't expand till ninety six. Promised because we could establish ourselves in the Florida Perfect. market, right? Yeah, With yeah. television sphere, the whole bit. Then Panthers are very nice if you, somebody yeah. coming into the market, fine. But the following year, John Ziegler was no longer there. You had that Gil lawyer. Gil Stein. Gil Stein, yeah. that crooked yeah. character. And Bruce McNall, yeah. what can I say about him? You know, he spent time in jail. Yeah. These two guys, because of the $50 million from Disney and from Huizinga, yep. which was Blockbuster then, yep. $100 million split, 
among them. Yeah. You know, they were coming in. Yeah. But then they changed the rules. And I remember saying at the meeting, I stood up and I said, this is wrong. And I was told, shut up and sit down by Gil Stein. And I got up and I walked out. Wow. There was nothing I could do about it. They changed the rules. You could protect. And that's how we got Poopa. Clark, he got the general manager in Florida. Yeah. But he had <clears throat> Van Beesbrook, Fitzpatrick, yep. and Poops, Poopa. I had to trade a third round pick to get Darren Poopa. Jeez. I mean, we got we got screwed, both us and Ottawa. Yeah, we did, without a doubt. Yep. And that's why. But where I think, I, think, is, I think worse for you because now you have a, a, a competitive team in your market. Yeah. You well, and then they divided the television thing, and they gave them Fort Myers and Naples, and we got the Panhandle. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Did you get the teeth to go with the Panhandle people? <laughs> I've never been to the Panhandle. Oh you know? no! Oh, it's never a, been up there. You right? know what? It's like Ar- it's is. like Arkansas, ish. Really? Well, it, they're tough people. Like I mean, they're it, and in knowing this, let's say they're from. Uh, well, my wife they're says from Iron Bridge. If I was going to use a Sioux Sudbury, Iron Bridge. they're from Iron Bridge. <laughs> Sudbury, <laughs> Copper Cliff. You guys, right. I used to tell Doogie he'd sunbathe on the rocks. That's right. <laughs> hey, by the way, we did we interviewed him yesterday, and yeah. he said. You're his favorite person of all in all of hockey. And he says, uh, he says, Asheville, he used to pick us up for practice. Oh, I live vicariously through those years. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> he said, he does not tell me about well, last I was night. a married one, right? Yeah. So I would go and pick up Murdoch and Dukes, mostly those two. One would have to sit in the front and tell me what they did the night before. <laughs> the other one could sleep in the back seat. <laughs> <laughs> so they would tell me the stories of what they did. And I'd go, God, to be young and single again. <laughs> <laughs> it's all that. Look, I, I really like Ronnie Duguay. I always have. I just wish he, if he had taken the job of broadcasting like I wanted him to, he'd still be here. Really? He'd eh? still be here doing it. But you never know in life, right? Well, yeah. He's doing okay. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. He's doing all right. We're looks good. Yesterday. He looks good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he looks uh, terrific. Yeah. He always has, though. Yeah. Yeah. He's he staying on has. top of his game. He's still actively involved, publicly anyway. He's still yeah. out doing doing lots, no, no, even though no. he's not he on TV. He does a lot. Yeah. He, he, Dukes is a special person. Yeah. He really is. And, and he came to all my golf tournaments when I was doing this charity for... Uh, actually, sled hockey t- players, we did okay. it for Wounded yeah. Warriors. Yeah. And I did uh, raise a lot of money for that. We, in fact, I took a sled hockey team up to Toronto. Oh, yeah? During the Canada Cup, the last Canada Cup, and they had a Northern Ontario sled hockey team play against our guys. Okay. And our girls, because the girls were on it, too. You ever sit in one of those? I have. I, I have not. Yeah, I did. That's not easy. I, it's unbelievably tough. It's unreal how sore and tired your arms get your arm. trying to pick on yeah. the ice. And you get don't that realize goal. how much your yeah. legs need. I know, because you're strapped oh. in there. Yeah. Well, no, listen, that's how I play now. My legs don't go anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got I, I'll just uh, anecdotal. I, I, it's the other night, I got in a little tussle, right? Yeah. I'm still playing, okay? Oh, are I, you? Oh, Good yeah, I'm playing in uh, three, three different leagues. So I'm playing, the, and a lot of younger guys, right? And so... I, I, I use my ass a little bit more than I used to. So we're going to the corner, and I just ask this guy out, and I pick up the puck. And, and he, gets, he gets furious, okay? And he starts coming at me. We get into a little bit. And I said, listen, relax, buddy. I, I said, I didn't even move my legs. He goes, yeah, you never do. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, great carve. I, I was mad at the guy, but at the same time, I thought that was good. Good comeback. <laughs> my brother used to say, and Bobby Tanner said the same thing. Johnny Busick, right? He used to say he got the fattest ass you ever saw in your life. When he stood in front of you, he blacked out everything. <laughs> <laughs> he was solid. Oof. Yeah. Man, yeah I like that because then I was shooting. <laughs> Listen, on that note, and I know we're winding down, yeah. but we haven't. We got to ask about uh, uh, the Stanley Cups with Boston. 
and mm. like specifically Bobby Orr, because Phil, you must get this all the time because you're one of the greatest of all time. You've been voted top ten. You're at your top five all time, top six all time. Bobby, you played with Bobby, your teammate. Can you share some insight of what it was like with Bobby Orr as a teammate and those Bruin Cup wins in '70 and '72? Well, Orr was without a doubt the greatest defenseman I ever played. I don't, I don't you know, and although he only what, played eight years. Well, yeah, I mean, he had a couple his, injury seasons and it works out that, to ten and change. The guy that did the operation, the first operation on him was a butcher. He was, it wasn't a punch. I shouldn't call him that. He was just a, 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 an ordinary practitioner guy, yeah. doctor yeah. that did those things. We didn't have specialists back then. Yeah. And it really screwed him up. Yeah. Right? Because I think about it. Bobby Orr could have played 20, 23 years like Ray Bork did, and Ray was yeah. good. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. But Bobby, there would be things that no one would ever touch. As far as stats are yeah. concerned, and yeah. everything else, yeah. and quite frankly, the Stanley Cups would have kept on coming. Yeah, and I probably would have never got traded. Yeah, but they knew Bobby was leaving, and from what I understand, that Eagleson did not tell Orr that he was offered ten percent of I the know. Boston oh, Bruins on a contract. Oh, that and that was story. And sent him to Chicago. Why? Just for the cash. rumor is no. Because of Canada Cups, he needed Wurtzy, who was the was the head of the okay. committee, uh, head of the board of directors. Board of directors. Yeah. Excuse me. Thank yeah. you. And he needed him to get these Canada Cups going, which were fine, but he sacrificed Bobby. And that's why, or and I'm telling you, you know the solid goal pucks. We got solid goal pucks. Yeah. Four of us. Me, Haji, Busick, and Bobby. Yeah. Okay, for scoring 100 points. Yeah. It's the second time I had done it. But four of us were in that. Yep. There were six of us in the top 10 in I, scoring I know. that year. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we got these solid gold pucks. I had a Russian offer me $750,000 for it. And I said, I can't sell it to a Russian. There's no freaking way I could ever sell it to a Russian. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah. And. But I've been thinking about it lately. Kenny Hodge and I have ours. Bobby gave his to Eagleson way back when. Wow. Johnny Busey wow. sold his way, way, way back then. Yeah. And don't know where it is, but there's Kenny Hodge and I still have ours. And I was thinking, if I don't do something with it, I give it to my daughter, she's just going to sell it. I mean, what's she going to do with it? Well, maybe the Hockey Hall of Fame will buy it. <laughs> I just no. You I'm an optimist. Not a hope I'm an hell. optimistic kind they, of guy. They almost buy nothing. They expect these guys to. They give. want me to give it to them. Yeah, and I'm not going to do that. Yeah, no, no, nor no, should no, you. Absolutely. So, no, Phil, are, are, are you suggesting? I will hold it for you. Are yeah. you suggesting you may everything. sell it? You're thinking of selling it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's 14 carat solid gold. Yeah. Uh, because you know, 18 carat is too soft to mold and all this stuff, but. It's solid gold. But Kenny Hodge has his too. Yeah. And you guys wow. are going to be We're going to see yeah. Kenny next. Yeah. And he, he may, well, I have mine in a safety deposit box, but I don't know whether Kenny has it around. Uh, but it's, the thing is, I couldn't get a Canadian interest in it. And I didn't, I see this, either a paid person in Boston, because it has yeah. rooms. Oh, okay, yeah, it's got the Bruins logo you know, on it. It's got a nice cover and all this other stuff. But I, I just couldn't think of myself to sell it to a Russian. I, oh, no, I, I absolutely. Well, when they're building their, their Hall of Fame over there. Are they? They were. Yeah. Oh, they were. I don't know whether they're still doing it. It's on the fourth or fifth rink where they built the rink where they had the World, World Cup or something one time years ago. Oh, they well, they had the Olympics there. in 2014. We're in Sochi. Okay, it wasn't Sochi. No, no, no. no. okay. This no, I is on, think they like, in the 50s. Moscow oh, 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 Moscow's okay. in rings. Okay, yeah. yes, yes, okay. yes. This yeah. is on the fourth ring, I think, outside of Moscow. Okay. And uh, they built this this big rink. Yeah. And they have, were building a Hall of Fame there. Okay. And they asked me if I would donate some stuff, and they thought about the gold puck. 
And I said, I'm not donating anything. Yeah. yeah. You, you want to pay for it? And they said, how much you want? Now, first I said a million dollars. Never heard SASC, right? Yeah. And then somebody came up with around 750, and I'm thinking, Jesus. do I want to give it to them? No, I don't think so. No offense to them. Yeah. They're yeah. good people. The, the people are terrific. Yeah. But yeah. Listen, Politics it should are, stay home, whether that be... It should you know, be Canada. I, yeah, absolutely. There's got to be somebody in the zoo who's got money. <laughs> are you kidding? <laughs> Please, are you kidding? They're, in Canada, really, I mean... There are a few people, I suppose, that do that, but I, I'm not. I'm. Haji and I were both talking about it. Then I said, maybe we give two for one. You know, get one price. I told Kenny, yeah. I says, but I'm taking more than you. I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. it. This, your Phil Esposito well, well, was. You know what? A hell of a player. I'll too. tell you right, right, right now. Uh, I don't have the money. Okay. <laughs> but I would be if I had the money. If I win the lottery, I will personally, with a bag of whatever currency you want. It's I all would, my money for my daughters anyway, my two daughters. Well, you know what? Enough. I'll tell you, it would be... I mean, think about it. I, I'm fine. I could, I've been yeah. gonna, I'm going to be 82. I mean, Jesus, you know. But you're I'm in great shape gonna, for 82, and I'm not yes, just blowing smoke. I, I feel you good. Know? Yeah. I really do. Uh, the good thing was that I've lost over the last year and a half about 30 pounds. Really? Wow. Yeah. I found it. Did you? <laughs> yeah, my wife, she said she found it too. And yeah. I said, really? I said, well, lose it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Find so, it to give it to somebody so, else. So what's, what's your, your, like, what have you been doing to lose the 30 pounds? <laughs> well, um, I, I was working out quite a bit, but the pandemic and the, yeah. and the crap with this stupid COVID. I, I was around in 1968 with the pandemic of the swine flu, yeah. or whatever yeah. it was back then. Yeah. I mean, it's over 350,000 people died in the U.S. alone in 1968 of that. Yeah. We didn't shut anything down. They wanted to, they, they, listen, this was a, the, yeah. I, I'm going to sound like this I need the, to wear a hat, a silver hat or whatever. Yeah, I know. Because I, but this was a, a farce, the whole thing. I couldn't the agree whole, with you yeah. more. You know, I yeah. couldn't agree with you more. And this definitely flu shots wonderful. all the time. I take a flu shot every year. Have I never took a yeah. COVID shot? So I I had a bunch of COVID shots because I have a son who I have a daughter who lives in Florida and a son who lives in Arizona, and I, there was no way I was not going to see my kids. Yeah. And my wife's a dual citizen. Oh, you gotta go. So, but you could fly. Yes. Right, yeah. but you only had you had to be vaccinated. So I got a, I got all the vaccinations. Still, got. Uh, you still v got. I still got VD. Uh, no, no, I, no, I, I, I didn't. Get it almost COVID. passed me yeah, by, no. but I got it. <laughs> we know massive overreaction. Yeah. But uh, like, was, yeah. Was, yeah. And, and and but you said about losing weight. There was other things. Like we really started to watch what I ate. You know, I'm I'm a pasta freak. Okay. Yeah. I, I'll eat pasta every day. I could eat it every day of the week. You're not doing much for the Italian stereotypes. You know that. <laughs> I know that. I know. <laughs> but that's, I, I, I like it. Hell, I like it with butter. You know? <laughs> yeah. I like it with salt and pepper. It doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, but I, my proportions are down. Yeah. And I think, and I eat probably three or four times a day, smaller portions. Yep. Yeah. And... It helped. Plus, I was working out like really well, and all of this. Couldn't go to a gym anymore. Yeah. Couldn't do this. So I walked a lot. I even skated a lot. Yeah, you're still skating. I haven't skated since uh, probably 2018 in Russia. Okay. Where that where yeah. your screensaver shot was taken. Yeah. 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 I, I skated in Russia. Um, every year, I went back two or three times to play hockey and to do appearances. I've been from Ufa, which is way up north, down to every place there is in, in Russia. And when you're there, people still remember. They re do they? Yeah. I saw a picture on the side of a car. I got it on my phone. On the side of a car, I was sitting in a bar 
with Scotty McPherson. You know Scotty. I never met him, but I know who he is. Was he a referee? No. 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 S- Scotty is uh, is really a, a, a good guy, and he lives there in in uh, in Moscow. And he married a girl from Belarus, and Scotty's an entrepreneur. He is the president of the Kunin Red Stars. Okay. In the KHL that play in, and they play in Moscow. Okay. Okay. They play in Moscow, and and Scotty and I, and honestly, it's like here it is. Look at You're that. You're kidding. That's it. On the That's side of crazy. a car. That's crazy. That's unbelievable. I, that. I run out of the bar to take this. On the oh. other side was Trechiak. Really? And it's still, they still remember because they play it every year in its That's, entirety. I just got That series. I, got I know, me too. Uh, that's cr- You know, I, so I Let need to Let me hold us up to the I, camera. I, you, that's, yeah. Can you believe that? That is crazy. That is, uh, when I saw it, I went, holy crap, and I ran outside to take, to take the shot of it. And you must have been blown away. I was, but they still they remember. still remember, yeah, yeah. That's great. Because they play that series. Yeah. Apparently, according to Vlad and a couple of other guys. Yeah. In its entirety, starting on September 2nd, we started? He started September 2nd, yeah. Until yeah. the 28th. Until the 28th. They play each game. Yeah. So the people, that the kids, see it. Yeah. What do we do in Canada? They didn't even honor us. I, we couldn't know, I, get anything. Yeah, it's brutal. And honestly, what year was that? Well, they, well, what they, year was the, the anniversary? 50th the 50th anniversary. 50th, 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 Bre- if Brendan Sh- 50th was last year. Right? It wasn't 20, for Brendan Shannon. Okay, you know yeah, why? Two years. Because, uh, and I say this, if we had had uh, Harper as the prime minister. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. I had right. already yeah. talked about yeah. it with him. And you know, yeah. it, it, it would have done that. And I, you know what? I, I, I honestly totally it, agree. It's ridiculous. You know, Trudeau wouldn't even talk to us. I mean, yeah. I, I, look, Kenny yeah. Dryden, who's a liberal, you know, yeah. he ran for yeah. politics. Yeah, yeah. Him and um, Serge were supposed to do this after Patty died. Yeah. Patty Stapleton was the force. Yeah, right. Yeah. He was. Yeah. And he used to call me all the time and try to get Tony to get involved. Tony didn't want any part of it. Why? He just, he never wanted to go in the first place. I mean, I, and he never forgave me for it. I see, and I would have thought, you know, because I have brothers, and, I, and we've had the opportunity a couple of times, my brothers and I, to play together over the years, because they were age differences and stuff. But I would have thought that, what a, what a great, be on the same team. And he didn't, he didn't want to go. We were we had to give back all our money at the hockey school, yeah. uh, and we never ever got it back again. Never lo- we lost it. We never got any money for our pension for 25 years, and from what I understand, it was Bathgate and Carl Brewer who yeah. weren't even on the team that got it for us. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got screwed. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Tony didn't want any part of it. The stress on my brother and the goalies, Tony took it different than Kenny took it. Right. Yeah. Kenny took it a little bit less, I think. Although, and Tony played that second game against Russia and Toronto. Yeah. Tony only had eight shots the first period. Four were breakaways. Yeah. 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 You know. He played great. And he took it, my brother, you couldn't talk to him before a game. You yeah. couldn't say anything. I remember in 77 when we lost. First time I ever missed the playoffs. So I go to the World Cup in Yeah, the World Championship. World Championship. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, yeah. World Championship. We're under there. Yeah. That's right. And then the Blackhawks lost out the first round, so the, Tony came over too, right? So Waller McKechnie comes up to me, and, and Waller was on the team, and he says, boy, can I go say hi to your brother? It was before a game. And I knew that if he did, Tony's going to yell at him and tell him to screw off and all that sort of stuff. I said, yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so he goes, hey, Tony, I'm Waller McKechnie. Tony said, who gives a shit? Get the hell out of here. Leave me alone. <laughs> Waller oh, comes funny. back. He says, what's going on? I said, can't you see? David Gaines, He's focusing, man. He, Tony would focus on focus on that game. 
You couldn't talk to them before the game. When we used to go into Chicago, I'd call him on the phone at home, trying to bust him. <laughs> when he came to Boston, I'd bust him. I took him out one night in Boston. We went to home at 5.30 in the morning. I remember this Copley Plaza, downtown Boston. Tony was bouncing off the wall as he's walking in. <laughs> he shut us out the next night. There were 35 shots we had, and he shut us out. He said, never the next night. It was two nights later that got me. Well, 73. <laughs> I mean, Tony in 73 against you guys was on freaking believable. Yeah. Like, look who you had. Dryden in 71, your brother in 73, and Bernie Perrant in 74. I know. You know? Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, those are the things. But if you without goaltending, I don't care. Yeah. You don't win. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you listen, yeah. you know what, and I and I hate to do this, like at least for as far as the camera goes, we have to stop because we're going to run out of camera. I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, no. I know. Are I you get kidding? One more no, thing. I one more thing. One more thing. Okay. Do you remember your first goal in the NHL? Sure. Against Terry Sacha. Against Terry Sacha. He went down yeah. on one knee. Yeah. Up over the shoulder. Was was that the game where you uh, had with Gordy Howe? You guys had he. he Actually, no, uh, that, because that I was playing regular with them. Yeah. But that was my only shift in the game was how when he gave me six stitches. Yeah. I mean, six seconds, I was on the ice. And you was your I, hero, right? Yeah, in the penalty box, and I, I, have a, I have a towel, and I'm going, trying to stop the bleeding. I lean over, and I say, and you used to be my son, so I only said, what you say, Wapo? <laughs> I went, ooh, nothing, Mr. Howe, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Gordy was special. Yeah, he was. He was a special person. Like people always ask me, who was the best player I ever played? It's pretty hard to judge a goalie against a defenseman. Yeah. Against a forward. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty hard. But Gordy could play all of them. Yeah. I believe he could play goal if he wanted to. Yeah. And so you know, in that respect, all around, Gordy, but. How could you knock what Wayne did? I know. Yeah. You can't. And how do you knock what Bobby Orr did? I know. With defense. Yeah. Uh, even though there were other. So guys how do you answer it? Were, you know. Can you answer it? Do you? No. Answer? I say the best goalie I ever yeah. played against was Terry Sacha. Yeah. The best defenseman is Orr. The best uh, centerman or best forward I ever saw was Wayne Gretzky. Right. Right. So, all around though. Yeah. If I needed <laughs> a guy to play defense. And then play wing, and then play center, Gordy. and maybe play goal. Yeah. <laughs> it would be Gordy. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Now I'm going to so take how this. How do you in, judge? Yeah. I'm going to bring this into a very deep journalistic question. Oh, that's bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's say you're going out with the boys, and you go to a karaoke bar. Yeah. What's your go-to song? Well, I don't do that. I uh, never. Uh, one time I did it. <coughs> you have. You have. There is a recording. Of you well, doing that's a, a, a song, song. We, we did called the Hockey Sock Rock. We yep. raised $750,000 really? on juvenile diabetes. Alan Thick and another Canadian who won numerous, numerous uh, Academy Awards, also Canadian, oh, yeah, he's yeah. Canadian wrote yeah. the Hockey Sock oh, Rock. Can't, can't think of his name. Robin Thick, who is a very famous person now, yeah. had diabetes. Juvenile diabetes. Okay. I remember sitting in Alan's home in Los Angeles with Robin Thicke bouncing him on my knee when he was like two or three years old, not even. Really? And and we did this for Alan to raise awareness for juvenile diabetes. Okay. And seven hundred fifty thousand wow. dollars. Now, I can tell you this: with the reverberators and all the background and all that other stuff, and the brandy I drank, I sounded like Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I mean, they could make you sound any way yeah. you want it. And we did it. And I've gotten people laughing about it and everything else. And on the other side was Pardon My Misconduct yep. with Marcel and uh, Charlie Simmer and Taylor. Yeah. Really? Yeah. No, they weren't even half as good as we were. Uh, why? <laughs> they, they never, I, you know what? Honestly, I didn't even know that. And uh, It was for JDF, so Juvenile Day. Hey, let's be honest. It all stops and starts with Honky Tonk Goose by Johnny Bauer. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there's, there's the original. But, uh. You know, as far as karaoke, I did do that one in, in London, Ontario, training camp with Jerry Cheevers. 
we got on uh, at Frankie Valley, oh pretty, yeah. pretty lady, da, 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 oh, yeah. da, da, I pray, oh pretty lady. Really? We did that. That's yeah. it. There so you go. We you did that. We were drunker than hell. But <laughs> we did that. Well, that's what you need to have. Yeah. So, oh, that. You know what? This has been fantastic, and I'm not gonna. Uh, so I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Gush, I've enjoyed it. I'm gonna gush a little bit because, and I, as I told you before the start, you were my dad's favorite player of all time. Your dad and, had good taste. And he, well, he did. <laughs> absolutely. You know. And, and and no, but you know what? And you you grow up, and and watching watching you play hockey and as a part as a Bruins fan in that era and as part of that I mean you know it, this is they always say never meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed I have to say not only have I not been disappointed but I I'm actually quite emotional about this so uh, I I'm, I'm really uh, quite I, I, I don't know how I can well, say you it you know what Chris that's all I can say is you're editing this yeah I'm gonna cut that make out. sure I look good that's you, all I'm saying. <laughs> well, listen, you look good. You look good. And Phil, thanks, Liam. Yeah, thank and you, listen, thank you so thank much, you, man. Man. And thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been Offside with Haas McGuire. Uh, I'm Haas. I'm McGuire. <laughs> and that's Espo. There we go. <laughs>